Data Privacy Notice De La Salle College of St. Benilde, or DLSCSB, respects your right to privacy and is committed to protect the confidentiality of your personal information, thus has adapted necessary organizational, technical, and physical measures to secure it. DLSCSB is bound to comply with the Data Privacy Act of 2012, or RA 10173, its implementing rules and regulations, and relevant issuances of the National Privacy Commission. By participating in this video meeting, conference or webinar, you are consenting to our collection and use of information, including recording, in accordance with this privacy notice. Information is also processed via video conferencing platform Zoom, please refer to their privacy policy at the website. The information process such as name, email address, your image, video, and audio will be used for attendance, documentation, communication, and systems administration purposes by authorized individuals of department, office or unit organizing the event and other offices authorized to have access. We also use the information gathered from you for abuse prevention and privacy protection. DLSCSB shall only retain the said personal information until it serves its purpose, after which it shall be securely disposed of. Queries and complaints can be directed to the Data Protection Officer via email at dpo at benielda.edu.ph. So let us all remember that we are in the Holy Presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, please guide us in whatever knowledge that we are acquiring today. And uh, may you help us to be more efficient, more patience, and more understanding in our assembly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, for to that end. Uh, uh, St. John Baptist de la Salle. Pray for us. St. Benil Drumanson. Pray for us. Leave Jesus in our hearts forever. Forever. Thank you. So please remain, guys, for the national anthem. Okay, welcome. Welcome po sa inyo lahat. Uh, now, um, I think uh, mas maganda if uh, we will let Sir Harvey for uh, opening remarks no? para at least uh, let's give him uh, an opening remarks first. Sige, Sir Harvey. Uh, you may ano. Thank you, Sir Ben. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, for, for this term, uh, we will have uh, a small transition. Um, as you could see, Sir Ben is now heading our meeting for GA. 
Um, he, he will be our OIC for, uh, he will be the OIC program chair for this term. And then um, I will be the OIC for associate dean for this term. So this would be a short transition. So hopefully, um, um, congratulations to everyone. We had a smooth um, enrollment period this term. And then we're hoping uh, um, this would um, this would be a trend that would carry on until the uh, finals exams. So for today, um, as I as I've said, Sir Ben will be heading the meeting, and then we will have a short uh, Q and A in a while regarding also our limited face to face. We have been discussing this uh, possibility in the past few terms, and um, this coming first term. Uh, will be the first round of um, our transition back into limited face-to-face. -face. So um, thank you everyone for attending. Medyo maganda ulit yung turnout natin. So hopefully uh, this will be another successful term for us. So we will just be here to observe and of course support Sir Ben and um, we will answer the questions of a lot of our students in the Q&A sessions. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Sir Ben. Thank you, Sir Harvey. Uh, currently, ang, uh, for your information lang, okay, uh, we have our track heads, of course, uh, from the previous uh, term. Meron po tayo niyan. You have our creative track, architect Jim Cameron. Baka nandito siya, wala. Uh, kasi may meeting. Okay, so... History track, si Sir Walter Biscom, si Architect Janil, Tech Desk, Architect Noel, and thesis track, si Architect MC Tubera. Planning track, si Architect Jojo Gutierrez. Uh, we have our professional track, uh, si Architect uh, Dia. Uh, building track, si, si Architect Christopher. Engineering track, si Jose. Okay, so mind lang po yung mga... Uh, trackheads natin. Later on pala, uh, it will be uh, the presentation of uh, Dean Asela. Uh, kasi alam ko, excited na kayo for uh, face-to-face, di ba? So, may hinanda siyang uh, presentation. So, be ready. Siguro sa huli siya. Okay? At least matapos natin itong presentation for our program muna. Okay? So, uh, I mean, kilala na ninyo yung mga trackheads para you know kung saan kayo mag-reklamo uh, or whatever. No? Or, uh, so, kilala natin sila. Okay? So, okay. Sige. So, next tayo. Uh, we have our academic advisors for TT, si Architect Noel, sa mga seniors yan. Okay? And yung 118, simula 8F. Okay? Uh, surname po yan. Okay. Si Architect Janil sa 119, C to Z ang surname. And then 120 sa letter A. Okay. Yung nangyayari po ngayon na late enrollment, uh, yung iba malapit sa akin, uh, okay lang yun. Kasi that is for, ano yan, eh? uh, for, this ter for, for third term siya. Okay. Ay, for second term pa. Okay. Architect Walter, uh, uh, kasama niyo si Architect Noel sa 118, GZ to GZ, 119, uh, A to B, and Architect Larry Karandam sa lahat, ay hindi, hindi sa lahat, 120, letter B to Z lang. Okay, kasi si Architect Janil lang nasa 120, letter A. Okay, and si Architect Erica Diaz sa 121, sa lahat ng 121. Okay, so I suggest uh, open up your, uh, parati yung babasahin yung uh, ano ninyo, uh, yung uh, binilled mail po ninyo kasi napaka-importante po yan. And by now, I bet you already see how important it is. No, lalo na biglang nagsipaso ka ng third term, biglang naghiwahiwala yung mga bata. New terms of appointment, we have new mentors, si Architect Kenneth Baltasar. No, uh, uh, he's been teaching in SOFA. Uh, before he got in, and then architect Michael Luga, I, I think he is also a uh, uh, from from Pasco yata to, no, si architect Michael Luga. We have a uh, admin change, okay? Uh, architect Harvey A. Vasquez, sabi niya kanina, uh, umangat siya for a position. 
uh, OIC siya for associating ng buong ESC. So he, he will be handling also uh, FDM, uh, industrial, interior. Okay, so, and of course, yung RT. And of course, ako yung magiging parang tatay ng lahat, uh, OIC chairperson. Okay? Um, institutional waiver requirement. Uh, um, it's again, required po siya. Maganda. Pa-reminder lang po si mentor kung wala pa po na na merong required no may, may, may waiver requirement po tayo and dapat talaga meron siya sa big sky ninyo na nasa nasa module 0 malamang may modules na rin kayo no uh, yan yung waiver liability assumption of risk and indemnity agreement so dapat meron po tayo kahit po hindi na po siya lately kahit hindi na po siya not notarized but if you want to be notarized, of course, nandito yung mga possible uh, attorneys uh, na nagno-notarize. Okay. So ayan, yung mga list natin. Later on, uh, you can uh, message me kapag uh, mayroong mga hindi notarized or kung saan po pwede mag-notarize. Okay, uh, I will send you this email. Okay? Grading skin changes. Okay. Uh, last term nag 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 change na rin ng grading scheme ng grading scheme, no? Nire actually nire-remind lang naman sa atin dito eh. Okay? Na ang passing mark ay 70%. Ibig sabihin zero based po siya. Nakalagay po diyan zero based cumulative grading system. Kasi right now wala na po tayo yung tinatawag na midterms. Okay, so finals na lang po tayo. Pero you have the right to know your grade pagdating ng 7th week o yung midterms. So pwede nyo po kausapin si mentor. Sir, ano pong grade ko ngayong midterms? O kung alam nyo po, nababagsak kayo at medyo dehado. Okay? Therefore, we can siguro galingan natin on the second half of the uh, week 8 to 14. Di ba? So, paano nyo ba malalaman? Paano nyo ba kinakalculate yung grade niyan? Guys, ganito ha. Kung kunwari over 20, okay. Kunwari over 20 siya, anong passing grade ng 20? 10 ba? Hindi. Okay. Ang passing niya, na or ang 70% ng 20, over 20 is 14. So, dapat po makascore kayo ng 14. Over 20. Okay, so yung 14 over 20 is just a 1.0 grade kasi 70% po siya. Paano po ginawa yun? Uh, simple, uh, 14, divide mo lang sa 20, lalabas dyan, 0.70 eh. Di ba? Tapos times mo sa 100. So kaya sinabi natin zero based po ang grading niya. Okay? Uh, kaya po ganito dahil po college na po tayo. Okay, kasi hindi po pwedeng 60 base or 50 base dahil pang ano po yun eh, pang mga K-12 lang po yan. Okay? So, of course, iba po yung weights. Iba-iba po yung weights ng grading system natin. O, kunwari ganito, course 1, 2, and 3. Mid, wag nating pansin yung midterm exam ha, kasi syempre nawalan nga tayo ng midterms exam. Eh. Magkakaiba yung weight. Dito sa slides na to pinapakita ko lang yung weights na may 20%, 15%, and yung pinaka-final requirement, yung 40%. So, ang pinakamataas po talaga dyan is yung final requirement o yung final exam. Kasi dito kayo, pwede mo bumawi. Diba? So, kausapin nyo agad si mentor kasi guys, uh, pandemic ngayon eh. Na, so, ang key talaga rito is communicate. Paano namin malalaman kung tatahimik lang din kayo, di ba? So, um, might as well, uh, inform your professors and inform your mentors. Okay? So, yung mga week ng mga grading, maganda, mapag-usapan nyo siya uh, one week, first week pa lang. Di ba? Or ihabol ninyo agad, sir, kamusta po yung ano po yung week ng ano natin, kamusta po yung ano natin, yung grading system natin. No? Uh, at least alam ninyo. Okay? And uh, baka yung iba na-discuss na, na, na rin ng mga mentors ninyo. Grading system, hindi ito nagbago. Okay? Since uh, panahon pa ni... Sino ba? Si Benil? <laughs> hindi naman. Uh, inabutan ko ng ganito 11 years ago. No? Uh, pag bumaba sa 70 yan, alam nyo na, Arian. Okay? Yung deferred courses, uh, kasi ano yan eh, uh, most likely ina-apply ito. Okay? And you have already INC. Uh, diba yun yung meron kayo ngayon? Yung INC. 
yung INC guys, depende yan sa professor kung at least may 50% ba, no? May prerogative yung professor para magbigay ng INC. Okay, kasi baka naman nagka-COVID kayo, 'di ba? Uh, bibigyan niya kayo ng INC. Pero again, kailangan yung kausapin si mentor na sir. Uh, nagpapasa naman ako ng mga plates ko kaya lang talagang nagkaroon ako ng ng COVID this term. Pwede po ba INC? Uh, 'Yun, makikita naman ng record ng professor ninyo na Uh, nagkakasakit nga kayo and nagpapasa kayo ng papel. Pero kung 50%, eh, hindi kayo nagpapasa, ba? Eh, malaking question yan. Malaking quest- questionable yan. Okay? Uh, malaking chance na baka hindi kayo magbigyan ni professor ng INC. Pero of course, uh, may leniency naman. Di ba? So, depende po yan sa professor. Hindi po yan automatic magiging INC kayo. Okay? Um, and above that, these are the grades, uh, the following grades na pwede natin. And guys, yung INC, um, two weeks lang po yan. Ha? Ay, two terms lang. Uh, kunwari, bagsak na kayo. Automatic magiging bagsak kayo pag hinayaan nyo po siyang uh, nakatenga yung INC ninyo pagdating ng two terms. Pag lumagpas ng two terms, magiging automatic R. Okay? Synchronous versus asynchronous. Uh, I think you already know this. Synchronous. Pwede kayo mag ganito lang po siya no. Uh, magde-demand po tayo na magde-demand si professor ng 7 weeks synchronous session. Okay, yan yung at least uh, nakikita kayo, no. Uh, at may meeting kayo, nag-uusap kayo kung ano na nangyayari sa klase, no. Uh, this is on via Zoom. Yung iba Google Meet, yung iba Microsoft Teams. Okay, but that that is synchronous already or yung consultation isa-isa, that is already considered as synchronous. Yung asynchronous, yun yung, ginag- yun yung purpose ng modules ninyo. May mga modules kayo, uh, you're viewing the video, nagbabasa kayo ng mga further readings, uh, yun yung part ng asynchronous. So ang uh, technique lang dyan, yung 50% ng contact hours nyo, i-compute nyo lang yung 50%. Okay? So alam na rin naman na natin ito. Eh, no? Latch. Uh, latch is another form of star para siyang uh, nung face to face kasi star ang tawag natin din student teacher assessment report no um this is really a uh, venue for you guys para at least masabi niyo kung how's your professor and your experience through the class okay so medyo marami tanong no uh, but uh, this is really needed No, para at least alam ng uh, ng admin no uh, kung paano kayo paano yung professor yung management ng professor yung uh, everything no so um, around ibibigay sa inyo to around ano eh, uh, mid terms something like that uh, you can already uh, assess your 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 teachers or your mentors okay Enrollment, uh, parati ko pong uh, kasi galing akong ano eh, uh, academic advisor. Okay, ang mga nagulat lang ngayon this term, uh, let's accept the fact na yung mga one-to-one. Okay, uh, one-to-one guys, uh, dati kasi nung first and second term, talagang ano sila eh, black sila eh. E ngayon, hindi na po. Hindi na po kayo black one-to-one. Okay, always check your SIS for as for any announcements or yung apps one that been yield, di ba? Uh, nandun po lahat ng mga announcement. Number two is always check your binilled mail, no? Hindi niyo po kasi alam baka naman may nagme-message na sa inyong professor, no? Uh, one to one, di ba? Uh, some of my kids sa Toark one, hindi pa alam kung saan mag-join. Nag sina-search nila yung Toark, for example, Uh, ang lumalabas lang yung isang toart ko na luma na kasi hindi nila binasa yung email most likely so again i remind you po no uh, these are all important paki pakilagay na po sa iPhone or sa iPad ninyo yung binilled mail isama niyo na po yan para pag any updates di ba uh, constantly nababasa ninyo wala pong problema madali lang po yan okay uh, and please do enlist on time Okay? Now, pag um, pagdating po ng enlistment, yun po yung unang-unang step eh. Okay? Kunwari, I missed my enlistment. Okay? Uh, sir, eh, na-miss ko yung enlistment eh. Kasi dahil ganito, dahil ganyan. Asan ka ngayon ng online adjustment? Meron pa tayong online adjustment. 
sa online adjustment ngayon, doon ngayon nagkakaroon ng uh, parang enlistment din yan. Pero most likely dito na kayo namimili ng section. Sir, wala pa po ako section, wala pa po ako ano. Sa online adjustment po yung ginagawa. Kasi ang technique niyan, ginagawa po muna lahat ng sections. Okay, binibilang muna ng estudyante yan. Binibilang namin yung estudyante. Okay, so again, by online adjustment, doon pa lang kayo makakapaglagay ng sections. Okay? Pagdating ng late enrollment, yun yung mga late enrollment ulit, di ba, sir, kailangan po man late, 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 hindi yan. And of course, you have, again, your, uh, yung kunwari, mga hindi pa nakapagbayad or ganyan. Uh, some of you are already messaging me. Pwede naman. No? Kaya lang, siyempre, malaki ang chance na hindi na kayo mapapagbigyan sa mga sa mga sections. Kasi most likely, tira-tira na lang yun. Di ba? Uh, some of you already uh, alam kung saan uh, hahanapin, kung saan po ba nakikita yung online and yung closed sections. Um, I really suggest to consult with your academic advisor. Um, malalaman po nila kung, uh, kung, kung kasi sila lang po ang nakaka-access. Eh. Kunwari sinabi ni mentor na uh, consult with your academic advisor at alam ninyo na 118 kayo. Okay. So, you search for the SIS kung sinong academic advisor yung kanina, kung sino yung uh, sa 118, yung pwede. Ano yung apelido ko? Starts with letter Q, for example. Diba? Lalabas doon kung sino. Okay. And of course, yung payment ninyo, do not forget to send proof of pay payment sa finance. Kasi paano nga naman nila malalaman kung nabayaran na yan, kung nabayaran nyo yun, kung wala kayong proof of payment. Okay, mas maganda, uh, meron kayong proof of payment. Okay, and that is yung, tinatawag natin yung, uh, of course, yung SER yun, at saka yung resibo sa banko. Yung iba, screenshot na lang, pwede nga eh. Okay? Si break will be on every Friday po yan. Okay, to 11 to 2. Kaya nag-meeting po tayo ngayon. Uh, short meeting po muna. Or si break. May si break po every Friday. Hanggang 2. If ever you have questions po, you have your vinyl hub. Kunwari about, kunwari, parang gawin nyo ng Google to. Kunwari may tanong kayo about uh, scholarship. Yan. Saan po kami dediretso? So itype nyo lang po siya dyan sa vinyl hub na website. Then, then uh, they will help you. Uh, kung wala man, diba, wala man, sir, wala po nagre-reply sa vinyl hub eh. O hindi tanongin nyo si, si chairperson which is ako. Okay, then uh, we can answer your queries. Okay? Uh, kindly subscribe. <laughs> Ganun eh. No? Pinlog in eh. No? Our YouTube channel, may binild art po tayo. Uh, ayan po. Uh, you have the link already. Uh, I will send it to you if you want. No? Just just email or message na lang ako sa, sa FB uh, para alam niyo kung saan makikita itong Pinild Architecture. Madali lang yan. Search nyo lang sa, sa YouTube. Makikita nyo yan. Okay. Um, Pinild Well-Being Center eh, sa SDA Campus. Okay. Um, may mga, kung meron man kayong nararamdaman uh, uh, sa, sa puso, sa damdamin ninyo, di ba? Or, sa, or physical. Parang ito yung guidance counselor eh, kung K, K-12 kayo, di ba? Pero tinatawag natin siyang well-being. No, uh, so yung BWC uh, Pwede kayong magkaroon ng counseling Free po ito okay? So you may Ito yung link niya Nandyan siya sa personal counseling At kung may gusto po kayong i-refer Na someone na Sa tingin nyo kailangan, kailangan Kunwari, kunwari lang ha, Someone told me na uh, Gusto na niyang Ayaw na niyang mabuhay sa mundong ito Parang ganun Mahirap, mahirap talaga No pag gano'n na ang ang usap ang usapan um, you cannot you cannot control kung ano pwede mo sabihin so might as well uh, consult with 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 a counselor and refer him or her pero discreet naman ang guidance counselor natin kaya do not worry okay so uh, this is the BWC okay Ayan na rin yung ano niya, yung QR code just in case. Pwede yun na rin silang i-QR code. They will reply naman agad. 
And uh, what we have here is uh, Saga. So, kilala nila na yan. Uh, Dodds, you may want to plug right now. Mga... Anything, Dodds? Uh, so, hello, everyone. Yan, sige, everyone. Um, as of the moment, we're preparing our activities for the term, but you can stay updated by following our social media accounts sa po. So Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Dodds. So, so, sila po ang mga uh, officers natin. Uh, magkakaroon din po tayo ng mga webinars. May mga webinars din po tayo sa mga Japanese art. Meron din. Magkakaroon din ng uh, Bayanihan and Bioscape. Magkakaroon din po yan. May mga webinars tayo sa Propra. Uh, pinafinalize lang din po natin yung, uh, yung mga doc- documents and papers. So, kindly support the the whole program through joining these kinds of webinars. So, tama si Saga, no? tama si Dodds, na please join. Okay? O yan, magsisimula na tayo sa F2F. Ha? Possible sections. Ano ba yung possible section? Uh, limited. Kaya LF2F limited lang po. Okay? Sa first term, SY2223. Number one na iniisip namin is of course yung lecture class, pwede po siyang ano eh, uh, online. Mas effective siya kung online. No? For limited. And yung mga merong laboratory, kunwari ARCOM3, kailangan nyo ng computer, ARCAD, kailangan nyo ng BCAD dyan, di ba? Or uh, B-Ray, di ba? Pagdating ng ARCAD2, kailangan nyo rin ng uh, tawag dito, Revit. Diba? So might as well on this three, magkakaroon na ng limited LF2F. Okay? Yung thesis, okay, yung ARC this 9 and 10, baka magkaroon na ng uh, endorsement or revalida. Pero limited lang din yung pagpasok nila. Okay? Um, later on na tayo magtanong. Okay? Uh, kasi mag- magpe-present si Dean later. And of course, yung mga laboratory. Ang iniisip naming laboratory ngayon will be yung higher batch, yung nasa ARCD 7 and ARCD 8. Uh, baka maging uh, limited na rin sila. Ang system, ang gagawin namin dyan is magkakaroon ng isang section for, for face-to-face na pwede sila mag-face-to-face. Ibig sabihin, pwede silang pumasok. May isang section or dalawa. no Parang ganun ang gagawin namin. Hindi ko alam kung paano magiging 60-40% ba ng students? You know? So everything is uh, under ano pa, under under surveillance muna. Para pagdating na ng first term, uh, at least uh, we can we can be prepared already. So pinaprepare na rin po namin yung, yung eskwelahan at yung mga papeles for this. No? Uh, and uh, yeah, before tayo mag Q&A, I think uh, Sir Aldous, you may want to share the video of uh, architect uh, Doty Asela, Dean Doty Asela. I-off ko na muna yung ano. No? And good afternoon or good morning, right? It's still 11 o'clock. Good morning to everyone, to our students and to our faculty. I see we're almost 100 here in our Zoom meeting. So thank you for the attendance and hopefully for a good participation later on. So please bear with me. We will have a one hour orientation. I'd like to walk you through all the changes or preparations we've been doing for the gradual reopening of our campus. So this orientation is about our limited face-to-face classes. So let me share my PowerPoint. Okay, can everyone see? Okay, Um, as you all know, we're already doing the limited face-to-face classes starting the third term, but this is just offered for a very uh, select courses, particularly um, for the new media and some of our arts and culture classes and uh, more in the Akik building where we have our culinary arts uh, classes. So uh, right now we're, we will be um, 
I think by next week, we will start our limited face-to-face -face classes already. So this is uh, my presentation back in February 18, 2022, when we started doing the um, orientations with our different students. So this is still very relevant because we're still using all the guidelines um, from IATF and SHED. Okay, so they have uh, provided us with these guidelines and we also have field health guidelines for our students. And then I will share with you the different um, preparations that we've been doing um, in terms of safety protocols and how do we access our building, particularly um, SDA or the DAC campus, and how are the faculty and students participating for this limited face-to-face -face classes. Um, we also have uh, adopted the cyclical student shifting schedule as mandated by, by CHED and how are we doing the enrollment schedule. So let me begin. So basically, um, for the past two years, we've been actually doing all our classes uh, with virtual Benilde. Okay, so this is our uh, full online classes, and we're very happy and thankful uh, with the participation of all our teachers and students. And it was really a struggle, uh, especially at the beginning, but we were able to um, weather it through. And I, I can say that um, we have achieved a lot with our online classes. Maraming nakapag-adjust na talaga. Yun. So maganda yung ating mga uh, uh, accomplishments. So even our capstone projects or the different courses that we're doing, ma magaganda yung mga outputs ng ating mga courses, even if it was really online. And then now we're uh, moving to the limited face-to-face -face classes. So of course, we have to follow IATF and SHED guidelines. So when we were preparing for the third term, we were doing this as early as October of 2021. Okay, so um, since last year, panamin pinagahandaan ang ating limited face-to-face -face classes. And during that time, we were using the, the guidelines by IATF and SHED, wherein IATF was allowing already the allowed phased implementation of the limited face-to-face -face classes for higher education subject to certain conditions and SHED guidelines. So ano ano itong mga CHED guidelines natin? So I'll, uh, I'll be highlighting lang certain provisions. So for example, this one is from section two with the scope and coverage. So basically it says here for alert level one, okay, we can have the full indoor and outdoor venue capacity. If it's alert level two, it's only up to 50% for indoor and 70% for outdoor. Alert level three, 30% indoor and 50% outdoor. So dito naka-specify um, up to what level we can actually accommodate in our um, learning facilities and that number two there's a concurrence of support from our local government units so whatever um, submissions or documentations that we have provided uh, ched we also have to provide it to the uh, city of manila and get their uh, support as well and number three, HEIs have a system to ensure that only fully vaccinated individuals, teaching and non-teaching personnel, students and visitors will participate in the limited face-to-face -face classes. Okay. Letter B, okay, number four, HEI um, has the on-site inspection of the CHED inspection team on retrofitted facilities. This is on the physical um, uh, facilities. So we have uh, submitted all our um, plans um, to, to CHED and we, we already got the approval of the CHED inspection team. So kaya we're ready to uh, accommodate our students starting next week. And then number five that we are of course following the minimum public health standards and COVID-19 related protocols of the DOH and uh, health and safety protocols of our LGU. Still part of the scope and coverage that the teaching and non-teaching personnel, only fully vaccinated teaching and non-teaching personnel will be um, allowed to join the limited face-to-face -face classes. To consider work from home arrangements instead, this is uh, for us um, on the working conditions. Okay, so even up to now, um, it's still uh, parang hybrid din kami, hybrid classes kayo, hybrid work arrangements kami. Like we report to campus uh, twice a week, but uh, three days, uh, we're still working from home. And that we're also uh, providing precautionary measures as needed for the vulnerable groups who will participate. I will discuss that further. Okay, for the students, ganun din po, only fully vaccinated students. Okay, now if we have students who are... Uh, with a high risk of contracting COVID-19, ito yung mga may comorbidities. 
Okay, to consider flexible learning. So basically, we're encouraging those who have comorbidities um, to take instead the uh, full online classes. So lagi tayong may option between the full online classes and the limited face-to-face -face classes. And there are e all higher education programs across disciplines to be considered for the implementation. Going into the details, ito, very important, limited face-to-face -face classes are not mandatory. So even if we are offering uh, uh, certain sections uh, for the limited face-to-face -face, uh, learning modality, there will always be some sections for the full online because we still have to consider those students who have comorbidities na, and some of our students are still in the provinces or even abroad. So they can still continue with their studies with the full online classes. And yes, we are following the DOH minimum public health standards, and we're still following the physical distance uh, required. Medical insurance, HEIs, shall ensure the students who will participate in limited face-to-face -face classes okay, under this um, memo and subsequent guidelines are registered with PhilHealth or with equivalent medical insurance that covers medical expenses related to COVID-19. And upong ibig sabihin to, if you will enroll for the limited face-to-face -face classes, then it is mandated, required by CHED, that we have our insurance. Kasi may risk pa rin po that we can contract the COVID or whatever um, possibilities. And po, so dapat at least we have uh, this insurance. Ano yung pwedeng insurance? Either PhilHealth or other equivalent medical insurance. Now, how do we avail of PhilHealth? Okay. So for students below 21 years old, okay, you do not have to register and pay for contributions provided they are added as one of your parents' dependents. So if you are still below 21 years old, definitely, and your parents are, st are still employed, then they are part of the PhilHealth system. They are members of PhilHealth, and they, I'm sure that they have already um, registered you as their dependents. Okay. So we just need to submit a copy of your parents' member, a member's data record, their MDR, to prove that they are PhilHealth dependent. Okay. Now, what if above tw uh, 21 and above na kayo? Okay. Students aged 21 years and above who are no longer qualified to be their parents' dependents are required to register either as formally or voluntary members and start paying the minimum monthly premium. So you may visit the website of PhilHealth, okay, www.philhealth.gov.ph for the registration. Students with no means to pay for the contribution Okay, you can also avail of the PhilHealth benefits as an indigent member. To qualify, you just submit the following requirements to the nearest PhilHealth office, certification from the Municipal Social Welfare and Development Office, or the medical social worker in the hospital. Barangay clearance, birth certificate, or if you are married, kasama na rin ang marriage certificate. Students will, st will stay under this indigent category until you are able to get a job and be able to afford the monthly PhilHealth premium. So, summarize po natin. Okay, if you are 18, 19, or 20 years old, then I'm sure you are a dependent of your parents. Sasamit lang natin yung copy ng uh, parents' MDR niyo. Okay, now what if... Um, 20 years, uh, by the time na mag-i-enlist tayo at magsasubmit tayo ng mga documentation, usually ang enlistment natin happens uh, after midterms. Ano? What if during that uh, enlistment period natin, you are still 20 years old, pero magbo-birthday ka by August. May mga ganun kasi ako naging question in the other uh, programs. Magbo-birthday na sila bago pa magsimula ang start of classes. So by the time na magsimula ang limited face-to-face -face classes, they would have been 21 years old already. So kailangan, pagka ganun, you already consider that you will have to be a member of the PhilHealth yourself because you are already of age by the time na um, papasok na tayo sa campus. Again, this is a requirement of CHED, not of, of the college. Ano? So kaya kailangan... Uh, comply tayo. So you will have to enroll yourself uh, or register yourself sa PhilHealth to be a member. So pag nag-member na tayo, okay, you just go to their website and um, register online. May mga requirements din na kailangan submit then comply lang po tayo. Um, once na maging member tayo, then we will have to um, pay also the minimum monthly premium. So maliit lang naman yan. But if you think na hindi pa kakayanin, okay, lalo na if you're a working student and you're also paying other bills, then you're still qualified actually to be an indigent member. Okay, may mga kailangan lang tayong ipakita dyan. So basically, dadaan tayo sa social welfare ng ating munisipyo or ng ating um, uh, city government. So sa LGU natin yan kukuhain to uh, um, prove na wala pa tayong kinikita o oh. Okay, or hindi pa enough. 
So, ibig sabihin, we will be an indigent member. And then eventually, pagka nagkaroon, natapos na tayo, nakagraduate na tayo, and we will be um, the regular member na of uh, PhilHealth, then we can convert to the um, regular membership ng PhilHealth. Bakit importante ito? Eventually naman lahat tayo ay gagraduate in one year or two years, mag-graduate na tayo, and we will be a member of PhilHealth. So, magandang masimula na rin natin ito. Okay po, so lalo na dun sa mga magka-capstone na, no? so kaya kailangan natin lalo na itong PhilHealth nito. So later on, we can ask questions about this. So I will proceed. So again, coming from our online learning modalities, we are now uh, moving to our limited face-to-face -face classes. But it's still important to note that the college has placed systems. So parang nagkaroon tayo ng traffic light within the campus. So we have identified three phases, the red phase, yellow phase, and the green phase. Because we don't know what may happen. There were, uh, right now, we're still in alert level one. And, um, and hopefully, ma, ma ease up itong alert level one at matanggal na completely. But there were also some projections na because of the recent election and a lot of rallies were happening. So baka umakyat ulit, mag-spike ulit ang mga COVID cases. So we're also anticipating na what if umakyat ulit to alert level two or worse, it, it can go up to alert level three. So any announcements of the government or even the city of Manila or even sa barangay level natin kasi we belong to three different barangays in, in Manila, okay, we're ready to actually convert to the different phases. So ngayon, we're in a yellow phase. We're in, we're actually in alert level level one. So our learning modality will be the limited face-to-face -face classes or lim limited campus access for our laboratory use. So for SMIT, and for SDA, actually, for the School of Design and Arts and the School of Hotel and Restaurant Management, we're offering the limited face-to-face -face classes. Pero sa Taft Campus, ang ating School of Management and IT, what they're doing is instead of the limited face-to-face -face classes, ang sa kanila naman ay limited campus access for the laboratory use. So lahat ng ito, kinilangan nang isubmit sa CHED. So hindi ito basta-basta lang na uh, ay nag-decide halimbawa si Dean Asela, sige, pwede na to. O since uh, medyo maluwag-lawag na tayo, pwede na mag-provide ng access sa laboratories natin. And hindi po, lahat po ng ating gagawin, we need the uh, concurrence of CHED. So lahat kailang submit sa CHED and also sa uh, City of Manila. So we're doing it really a gradual, yung title natin dyan, it's really a gradual reopening of our learning modalities and gradual reopening of campus accesses, access wherein we have to uh, submit all our plans to CHED and Manila. So again, nasa yellow phase tayo, but we're also ready in case na bag, uh, biglaan tayo mag-alert level 3 ulit. Like, uh, again, we were preparing this as early as October of 2021, and we were hoping na nung December, nag-ease up tayo to alert level 2, and we were preparing na luluwag. Pero pagdating ng January, biglang nag-spike up ulit ng lahat ng COVID cases, bumalik tayo sa alert level 3, di ba? At talagang uh, we even had our mental um, mental health break, ano? Nagkaroon tayo ng two weeks na class suspensions because of the COVID spike. So we're always ready for this eventuality na kung magbabago ulit ang alert level 3, then we, we will just shift back to the online learning de delivery natin. Okay? But we're also hopeful now, eventually, this pandemic will really um, end, and then we can now move to the new normal. We are also preparing the Benil blend. This is the blended learning experience and delivery, wherein we can have students in campus and also students online na pwedeng sabay na kinoconduct ni teacher ito. So we're also uh, starting to invest in our class, in our campuses or in our classrooms where we can accommodate that kind of flexibility. Pero wala pa tayo doon, we're still testing it out. Okay? So for now, we are at yellow phase, alert level one, limited face-to-face -face classes. And what are the preparations of the college? So syempre, we, we did a lot of stakeholder surveys. Okay, so uh, for our students, our faculty, pero syempre we had to start internally. Ano ba ang capacity ng uh, different departments, ng registrar's office, okay, ng clinic, ng ating security, and of course the academics tayo. Lalo na kaming mga guro, how can we actually handle, okay, having classes online and also having classes uh, face to face. Um, Face to face. So, for example, have you noticed uh, ang ating chairperson, si Miss Olive, is in campus. Okay, yung kanyang background nasa, nasa school na siya. So, what if Miss Olive has a class? Okay, and she's also required to report now to, to school. How will she manage as an administrator and also as a teacher? So, we need to also uh, do a lot of those preparations. 
And then back to Benil Task Force. And this is headed by our Chancellor, Ben Heron, and Vice uh, Chancellor for Academics, Mr. Um, Angela Laxon, and Vice President for the Administration, uh, Sir Terence Q. And of course, uh, the different members, yung nga sa clinics, sa registrars, sa academics, uh, DTO also, yung ating IT department, and all the other critical departments. Health and safety, safety protocols, lagi tayo nakabantay. Okay, with uh, what's happening in the medical field. So again, we know in uh, in January, nagkaroon ng spike ang COVID because of the Omicron uh, variant. We're also monitoring the different variants in uh, in the other countries. We already know that we have another Omicron variant, and the Omicron itself has a, another variant, and marami rin pang iba pang variants. And we're all always monitoring lahat ng ito kung meron ng pumapasok sa bansa, and if it will pose a problem to the country or especially to our uh, college. And we're always ready to for the different contingency plans. And then we also lined up any more programs and courses that will be able to provide the limited face-to-face -face courses. So may mga nauna na ngayong uh, third term and magpo full blast na tayo by uh, September, which is the start of the school year 22-23 first term natin. We did a lot of the retrofitting of facilities. I'll show some of the pictures later. And we completed the self-evaluation documents, which we submitted to CHED and also to the City of Manila, Ayon, LGU documents natin. Okay, for third term, ito yung mga naging pilot implementation natin sa SHRIM. Actually, maswerte tayo sa SDA because we were able to convert all our courses to full online. Sa SHRIM, medyo nahirapan sila because culinary arts, kailangan talagang magluto. Okay, hindi pwedeng online yung pagluluto at yung pagtikim ng mga niluto nila. So may mga courses tila, sila na talagang naiwan at kailangan nilang um, i-offer na yung limited face-to-face -face, uh, classes natin. So sa kanila, the... Um, they, they're offering 12 courses uh, sa hotel, restaurant, and particularly ito nga yung mga culinary arts courses nila. Sa Smith, they're also offering courses but more of production time nila. So hindi ito classes but more of the usage of their facilities. Sa SDA, um, eight programs offered, multimedia arts, animation, photography, film, dance, um, production uh, design, and theater arts. So eight eight programs, but if you'd notice, ilang courses yung in-offer nila. So sa MMA, kahit ang laki-laki ng MMA program, isang course at isang section lang yung offer nila. So we're only anticipating 18 students out of their uh, more than a thousand student population nila. So 18 students lang yung expect namin ngayong Mayo. Sa animation, oh, one, one course, one section, we're anticipating about six students lang. So photo, mga one section lang din, film, one section lang din, dance, uh, yun, two sections sila pero mas konti ang kanilang student population at ganun din sa production design and theater arts. So why am I sharing this? I'd like to impress upon everyone that we're really doing this very gradually and we would like the support of all our students and faculty that when we do, when we uh, um, lay out all our safety protocols that we really have to follow. Uh, kailangan magtulungan tayo, full cooperation ng lahat, so that maganda yung takbo, okay, ng mga imp pilot implementation natin para ma-approvehan ma tayo pag pagdating ng next school year. So ano-ano yung ating mga safety protocols? So again, of course, we're following school policies and guidelines as uh, mandated by CHED, DOH, and DOLE. And we also have our health declaration form. So some of our students already requested um, access to SDA because they needed to get some of their um, um, some of their things sa kanilang mga lockers. So for, for those of you who were able to visit already the campus, you had to fill up the health declaration form. This is digital. So na anja naman yung QR code, you can scan that. Or you can go directly dun sa website ng um, apps1.benil.edu.ph slash hdf. And you will have to um, fill up um, itong uh, digital uh, health declaration form na to, at least in the morning. So uh, for example, ako, I was in campus yesterday. So before leaving the house, I checked already, I registered and filled up the, the digital form. And I got this um, health declaration um, clearance. So for this day, I was cleared to enter the campus. So yung normal, itinatanong, ano yung temperature mo? Do you experience um, cough or colds or whatever symptoms? Exposed ka ba sa isang COVID patient? Ganyan. So it's the regular health declaration form nyo. Another um, safety protocols, pagpasok natin sa SDA at yung nasa tabi ng generator, okay, um, coming from the street, 
there's already the sanitation mat. And then you would see at the end, merong um, wash basin where we can wash our hands. So for those who are commuting or living within the area, so at least we can wash our hands even before entering the campus. But for those who have their cars, okay, so of course, dadaan siya sa driveway natin at magpa-park sa building. For the third term, libre pa po ang parking kasi konting-konti lang naman tayo. Pero pagpasok na ng first term, okay, balik na ulit tayo sa ating mga parking fees wherein you have to purchase yung inyong mga parking. I think it's like a voucher. Um, before going to campus, you'll have to uh, avail of that sa uh, finance natin. Okay. Pagpasok natin sa ating building, so this is our SDA lobby. Okay, you will have to do a temperature screening. So normally, ang ating body temperature nasa mga 36.5, 36.8. But if you have commuted, okay, ng isang oras, medyo baka tumaas ang ating temperature, baka nag 37.6. Okay, kasi alam mo, summer na, ano, mainit. So what if uh, mainit lang naman dahil bumiyahe nga tayo, then there will be a holding area. And the holding area is actually at the generator. So paupuin ka muna for about 5 minutes to rest until your body temperature will settle down at bumalik sa normal, usually below 37.5 naman. Okay, pero what if, okay, mataas talaga, okay, then you will be um, ushered to the clinic already for isolation at titignan natin kung um, kailangan pang uh, makatanungin ka ng nurse, ano yung situation, may other symptoms ba, or baka naman after 10 minutes ay um, mag, ano na, mag-stabilize na ulit yung body temperature. Okay, once inside the, the, the campus, you would notice a lot of the signages where you can actually walk. Okay, one way tayo, going uh, ingress and egress natin, so entry and exit points. Ang ating mga seating areas, may mga markings din. Okay, so uh, we know naman the drill, it's been two years, so we know how it is uh, for the public spaces. So there will be a lot of signages, and we have to follow all the signages. So these are a summary of the safety improvements that we did for the college on the operational side. So yes, we've done a lot of the additional signages, wayfinding and safety reminders. We have alcohol dispensers for the identified rooms kung saan may mga maglilimited face-to-face classes. But of course, uh, public spaces marami yan, lalo na sa ating elevator lobby. Um, identified entrance and exit points and with adjusted security manning depending on the level of operations. There will also be perimeter control linked to clinic on campus access clearance, okay. safety representatives per office, emergency medical technicians, okay. um, and lower than IATF prescribed percentage capacity. So, ano to, slide 23. Remember yung unang um, capacity mandated by IATF and SHED. So, meron nakasulad dyan, ilang percentage, 70%, 50%, yan. So, we will not maximize that. We will always do a lower okay, occupancy level so that we can ensure that everything is still within managed, okay, manageable natin, yung operations natin. Ayan, so lower than IATF prescribed percentage capacity for indoor and outdoor. For medical services, uh, for all campuses, both um, ACIC and um, SDA and TAF, we have our clinics there, but we've also identified isolation rooms in the three campuses, and we have the continuous monitoring of associates and students who report their health condition. I think this, uh, this, uh, this has been in place for the past two years. Na kahit full online tayo, we've also been reporting to the clinic if we have, um, if, for example, uh, um, um, we're uh, suspect for COVID. Okay, we've uh, also reported our health condition to the clinic and they've so provided support. Or yung iba na talaga nagka-COVID, they've also provided support, ano yung mga kailangan gawin at saan sila pwedeng kumuha ng, um, ng mga kailangan mga clearance. And in campus, uh, before, nung wala pang mga sudyante, even the Taft campus was actually converted to an isolation facility together with Red Cross. But ngayon na magsisibalikan na tayo sa, sa campus natin, so of course, uh, na-stop na itong isolation facility ng Red Cross. Okay. Housekeeping, there's an increased frequency of campus and room disinfection. Um, lalo na for the, for the classrooms that will be used by students. So kailangan, uh, remember before, we only have um, 20 minutes break in between. For Taft Campus, it's only 10 minutes. For SDA, it's 20 minutes. So for example, your class is 8 to 11. 
Then the next class is 11.20 to 2.20. So laging may 20 minutes break in between to allow for the ingress and egress of students. And at the same time, some of our housekeeping personnel to check the room na wala nang basura, well, maayos yung classroom natin, malinis. Sa ngayon, madadagdagan yan. So it's not just the cleaning or taking out of the garbage, but also the disinfection. And we also need to consider na dati, pag, pagka nag-bell na, no? so sabay-sabay yung mga students na lumalabas at sabay-sabay din na nagsisipasukan. So, uh, yun yung ating um, uh, part ng consideration natin in terms of the mobility within the campus. We need to ensure na kahit na nandun na tayo sa loob ng campus at uh, papasok o lalabas tayo ng mga classrooms natin na hindi tayo magsisiksikan, we will still follow the social distancing required. Use of medical grade disinfectants. Um, we're using uh, yung mga disinfectants with longer efficacy. Nakasulat yung brand dyan, sana sinun. Color coding of cleaning tools to avoid cross-contamination. Iba yung ginagamit sa banyo, iba yung ginagamit sa mga classrooms natin. We're also using the easy fog machines and the UVGI room sterilizers okay, to, clean, uh, to disinfect the classrooms. Um, logistics and associate services, ito yung in-offer natin sa ating mga staff. Okay, um, lalo na nung kakastart pa lang ng COVID and there were no public transport, so we had to provide shuttle services for associates. But now we have uh, uh, fully, uh, naman, um, fully running ang ating mga public transport, so uh, hindi na natin i-offer itong mga shuttle services. And we also provided some um, boarding accommodation for associates and selected contracted personnel, particularly yung ating mga registrar um, Personnel, kasi kahit na nung COVID, tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung transaction, of course, ng enrollment, enlistment, payment, graduation at lahat. And all our um, um, documents are still really on the printed uh, version, hindi pa lahat online kasi biglaan nga itong pandemic. Ano? So we're still, we're still transitioning our documents to, um, to e-format. So kaya karamihan sa mga registrar's office natin um, had to actually uh, live within the area. Uh, kaya nag-provide din tayo ng mga accommodation sa kanila. So talagang inasikaso ng binyild ang ating mga associates in the past two years during this pandemic. Okay. Engineering measures, we're doing, uh, we're providing hand washing station in strategic locations. So katulad nga nung pinakita ko kanina, nasa ano yun? slide 20 I think. Okay, so sa dulo, merong biglaan, nagkaroon ng lababo dyan for hand washing. For the different floors of SDA, marami naman tayong um, toilet facilities at marami naman tayong facilities for hand washing. So hindi na kinailangan dagdagan. But for the Taft Campus, uh, kasi ito yung ating mga lumang buildings, so naglagay talaga sila ng mga additional hand washing stations. There's also an improved ventilation in comfort rooms. So sa comfort rooms ng SDA, this is fully ventilated naman. Malaki yung mga toilets natin at may mga bintana, malaki rin yung um, pintuan. Kumbaga. But for Taft Campus, maliliit ang mga banyo doon. So they had to also improve on the ventilation of the comfort rooms doon sa mga specific locations na yan. Uh, we also installed some air purifiers for different rooms na gagamitin ngayong third term. Um, again, this is based on the very stringent protocol given to us last 2021. Pero ngayon, medyo lumuwag na tayo. Isas dun sa mga stringent protocol na ito was the zero recirculation Re zero recirculation for the centralized air conditioning system. So let me explain this. I'm an architect by profession. So explain ko lang uh, in layman's term. Okay. So for us, um, sa campus natin, STA is actually uh, um, fitted with a centralized air conditioning system. So once na i-turn on natin ang aircon, it's the whole building actually na naka-on ng aircon. So centralized yan. So ibig sabihin, uh, may ducting tayo na umiikot sa buong building natin providing that cold air. So saan galing yung cold air na yan? So nagsisimula yan with an outside air. Okay, at may air damper doon. Okay, big sabihin kahit partially medyo nalilinis na yung hangin na kinukuha mula sa labas. Okay, partially. Okay, and then papasok yan doon sa main duct system natin. There's a filter to clean that um, the, the air coming from outside. And there's this air um, uh, chilled, uh, chilled water supply. Okay, so dito sa coil na to, may dumadaloy na malamig na tubig. Yun yung nagpapalamig ng hangin. So kung kahit na summertime, mainit yung hangin na galing sa labas, the outside air, pag dumaan dito sa coil na ito, it will now be um, chilled air okay, or cold air. And then may fan sa loob and it will be distributed sa iba't ibang... Um, Air, um, spaces natin. So whether in the in the offices or in the classroom. 
Na pag lumalo itong nasa itong cold air na to within our classroom, iikot yan sa classroom natin. But because inside the classroom, of course, our body temperature, okay, uh, and of course, with the, with the computers, so umiinit ulit yung hangin na yan. Okay, pag uminit yung hangin na yan, babalik siya dito sa return air, okay, na, na, na ducting na ito, and then papasok siya ulit dito sa system, sa filter, sa coil, and then sa pan, palalamingin ulit, and then ila, i, uh, bubuga ulit sa kwarto natin. So ito yung ating centralized air conditioning system. But with, with the COVID situation, ang nangyari, there was a danger na baka yung umiikot na hangin, baka may COVID, okay, um, may, may mga bacteria and virus. Ano? So what, what, uh, what was required of us was the zero recirculation for the centralized air conditioning system. So hindi na pwedeng ibalik yung hangin. Okay, so what we did was to close this uh, um, particular uh, ducting system na ito and we just had to get all the time air from the outside. Okay, para bago ng bago. So this was how stringent the requirements of IATF in SHED okay, back in 2021. And we had to, of course, comply. So yung mga magkaklase ngayon, ngayong, um, ngayong May until July, we had to provide etong zero recirculation dun sa mga particular classrooms na ito. So ano-ano yung mga classrooms na yan? Okay, hindi naman yung buong SDA building. So because uh, identified namin ano-ano yung mga programs na mag-provide nitong limited face-to-face -face classes, so we just had to provide retrofit um, air conditioning system sa 6th floor, sa 5th floor, 10th and 11th. And it's of course, it's also very costly yung uh, retrofitting nito ng air conditioning system natin. Uh, uh, but good thing, naiayos natin yan. Kaya naman, nakukuha na tayo ng approval from CHED that we have retrofitted our facilities. So may go signal na tayo from CHED to conduct our limited face-to-face -face classes. And this is based on the stringent guidelines of, uh, of uh, CHED. Pero ngayon, dahil bumaba na ang... ang, ang ang COVID situation natin, ang mga cases. So medyo lumuwag, but still, we are mandated to follow for this third term, okay, yung stringent policies. Okay, access for the SDA campus. So we actually have three access points. So ito yung main access natin. So nandito yung generator where we enter kung nag-commute tayo. If, you, if you're bringing your car, then you access it through the driveway and then nagpa-park tayo sa, sa building natin. And then on the left side, meron pang mga side uh, access points tayo. Ito yung sa MCAD. Okay, nakakadaan ng students dito. On this other, on the left side, I think it's just the associate who can access this um, uh, gate. Okay, so hindi pwede dito ang studyante. So ngayong May, ang gagamitin lang natin ay ang main um, access point natin or main entry natin which is along the PO Campo. So both for the pedestrians and for the car access. So nakalagay naman na dyan ang uh, flow natin ano? okay, for ingress and egress. And again, this is my presentation to our students who were availing of the limited face-to-face -face ngayong May. So I had to provide theater, ang dance, and while they're doing their classes dito sa mga laboratories nila, sa mga hallways, we actually provided mga lunch areas nila. Because during this time, ang sabi ni Ched, bawal pang mag-share ng pagkain. Okay, and we couldn't also open the cafeteria during that time. So ang requirement namin sa aming mga students ay bring your own baon and we will just um, eat dito sa mga hallways natin. So nag-ready na rin kami ng mga tables and chairs. Pero right now, we were able to negotiate with Kitchen City. Ito yung ating concessionaire for our cafeteria. So they're operating already um, sa 12th floor. So pagbalik nyo by September, um, open naman na yung ating cafeteria sa Chelsea. This is the sixth floor, the dance studios. So ito ba, bibilisan ko na lang because uh, this is for the other programs. Okay, MMA and also ang film. Okay, magkaklas sila sa 10th floor. And then also sa 11th floor. And 14th floor. Now, you also did our social distancing um, requirements. So may mga static distancing parameters. So ang nakasulat doon dapat 1.5. Okay, so lumalabas dito, if you'd notice, between person to person, nasa uh, 1.6 meters pa nga yan. Okay, so even bigger. So there's, all, there's this effective physical distancing between students and the faculty. Kaya um, ito yung in natin in the classroom setup natin. 
and we also have the dynamic distancing parameters. Um, we have we have courses uh, for the live arts, so for example, dance class. So hindi lang naman sila nakatayo, ano? so talagang continuous yung movement nila during the class. So we also established na yung kanilang um, um, social bubble or yung kanilang required spaces ay bigger. So we, yeah, mas malaki yung kanilang requirements. We provided for them four meters so that they can really move about sa kanilang mga uh, dance studios. So for example, this is for the theater arts. Makihan ko lang, ano? So kailangan din namin ipakita, no? So even on the theater, if they're doing their um, production classes, na there will always be that social distancing um, on the stage and even backstage or even sa, sa audience side. This is for the scene shop on the fifth floor. This is for the dance studios. Ito yung sinasabi ko na mas malaki yung required nilang mga, uh, kay mga required social distancing. This is for multimedia. Okay. So yung mga computer laboratories nila. Okay, I will just share with you. Okay, like this one. Um, sa MMA, magkakatabi yung kanilang mga computer tables. Okay, so wala yung two meters apart. So kaya ang kinailangan namin i-identify uh, is that um, to achieve the required social distancing, may isang computer table na hindi magagamit. Okay, so kaya may table one will be used by student, table two, wag mo nang gamitin, then the table three will be used by the student. Um, this is for the MMA computer lab na masikip sila medyo dyan. So ganun din dito. Pero for the animation, Mas malaki yung kanilang classroom. So, MMA. Oh, this is uh, animation. So, sa animation, so kahit na mas malaki kasi yung classroom nila, okay, yung kanilang table mismo can already provide that um, 1.5 or even 2 meters social distancing. So, the animation uh, studios can even accommodate 20 students in a class. Unlike MMA, they're limited to 10 to 12 students. So yun din po for, for fashion design, you'll need to check, Miss Olive, your computer room. Okay, I think you have one computer laboratory. How big is it? Can you accommodate the 20 students um, given the required social distancing? Okay, digital dark room. How can a faculty participate? Sino yung mga pipiliin natin na magtuturo sa limited face-to-face -face classes? The faculty should be fully vaccinated. Or meron siyang fit to work medical certificate. Ito yung para sa mga immunocompromised or MARP, ibig sabihin ay most at risk population. Ito yung mga with comorbidities or high risk pregnancy. Must be registered in field health and or medical insurance. So for our faculty naman, because we are um, employees of Benilde, lahat naman po kami ay may field health. So covered na kami dyan. For students, any mga requirements, ganun din. Fully vaccinated. If you have if you have MARP or you are part of the most at risk population, then you need a medical certificate saying that you are fit to participate. Ano po ito? So for example, ah, mihika ka, okay? Um, then you go to your doctor, then the doctor, your personal doctor, your family doctor will have to say that you are fit to participate as long as you have your medicine naman na hindi ka mako-compromise pagka um, nag-participate ka sa limited face-to-face -face classes natin. So, hindi pwedeng yung doctor ng school because hindi nila alam yung buong medical history ninyo as um, baka matagal, no? grabe na yung, um, yung inyong comorbidity. So, it's really uh, coming from your family doctor. Ito rin po, must be registered in field health and or medical insurance. So, kung halimbawa naman na meron kayong medical insurance sa family ninyo, make sure lang na yung updated medical insurance. Okay, ito yung may kasama na na COVID. And then, must submit signed deed of undertaking. What is this uh, deed of undertaking? So, for those of you, yung mga luma na natin mga estudyante na naka, nakapag-participate pa sa ating mga off-campus activities, every time we go out of campus, meron tayong pinifila pa na waiver. Po, na sinasabi natin na you are doing this um, voluntarily and that you all know yung uh, requirements and also the risk involved dun sa pag mga off-campus activities natin. Ganun din ito. Um, um, ang difference lang naman, this is actually in campus. Pero what are we saying here? Medyo mas mahaba lang. Ano? We had to go through um, sa legal side. We had to check with our lawyers kung paano natin to. Um, this is very important. So please bear with me. I will have to read the whole thing. So undertaking assumption of risk and waiver. So this is for students 18 years old and above. 
So, ibig sabihin, pag 18 years old, uh, of age ka na and that you can sign as a student, but still, you will need the um, concurrence of your parent or your guardian. So, I, student, and student number, FDM of De La Salle College of St. Benilde, voluntarily agree to attend participate in the face-to-face -face classes and or college activities starting the, uh, for example, first term of school year, academic year 22-23, first term, yeah. and hereby agree to undertake the following. Number one, that I will fully comply with health and safety protocols and mandatory reporting guidelines set by the government and by the college and other rules and regulations stipulated from time to time. So we're always monitoring, baka may mga bagong guidelines and nilalabas ang ITF at saka ang CHED. Number two, that I'm fully vaccinated and preferably boosted against COVID-19 as defined and determined by the Department of Health and or City of Manila. So itong undertaking na to, this is for the third term. So I don't know kung pagdating ng first term, babaguhin nila na kailangan, kasi nakasulat dito, preferably. Ano? So baka by that time, kailangan sabihin na hindi na lang preferably, but that you are also boosted against COVID-19. Of course, we're also waiting kung ano ang provisions ng DOH para sa ating mga um, booster shot. So ako, for example, before election, I tried to get my second booster shot only to be rejected. <laughs> Sabi sa um, vaccination sites na wala pa daw announcements kung pwede na kami mag-avail ng second kasi nakuha ko na yung first booster shot ko nung December and I was hoping na after five months I can get my second booster shot pero sabi sa vaccination, vaccination sites, hindi pa daw pwede. So I'm also waiting dun sa announcement ng DOH. Number three, that I am covered by PhilHealth, either direct or indirect member with updated contributions and or with an equivalent active medical insurance, which covers COVID-19 related expenses. So I think I discussed ko na kanina. Number four, that I have submitted the school health services medical record, ito po yung clinic natin, to the Center for Health and Medical Services upon admission to the college. So meron kasi tayong, lalo na yung mga crush natin, well, um, when you started with the college, meron tayong pinipila pa ng medical record and that we submit to the clinic. Yung sa mga hindi pa nakakasubmit, make sure na na-submit na, na natin or ma-update natin. Yun. So in case of non-submission, please coordinate now with the clinic. Number five, that I am not considered part of the most at risk population. Okay. However, if I am with such health conditions, I will coordinate with the clinic through email for further evaluation of eligibility to participate in limited face to face classes. And I will submit, if necessary, a certificate of fit to certificate of fit to participate in the limited face to face classes from my attending physician. Ito po rin na discuss ko na. Supposedly, okay, you are not part of the MARP, but if you are, then you will have to submit sa clinic yung inyo fit to participate na certificate and that the nurse or the doctor will, of course, evaluate your eligibility. Number six, that I will regularly self-monitor for signs and symptoms of COVID-19 through the online Benilde Health Declaration form. Number seven, that I will inform the college through the clinic and then yung, yung address, email address, and copy furnish program chairperson at any time before, during, and after the face-to-face -face classes and or college activities should I, number one, experience fever, colds. So ito, ito yung mga regular symptoms ng COVID. Number two, come in close contact with a known case of COVID-19. And number three, in any manner whatsoever, contracted COVID-19. So ibig sabihin po, okay, obligasyon natin na i-inform ang college, i-inform ang clinic, ang inyong chairperson at ang inyong teacher na kung before, okay, nakasulad dyan, before, during, and after, okay, your classes na meron kayong yan, experience. So for example, ang class natin Wednesday, Tuesday may na-experience na kayo inform nyo na. At kung na-inform nyo na, okay na, meron pala kayong sore throat at parang, yun nga, may nagsisimula kayo ng baka trangkaso, hopefully, ayun na, regular, sana, common codes lang or trangkaso, then inform nyo na yung yung teacher and share and decide na na to attend already the Wednesday class. Eh, what if naman pumasok kayo ng maganda pa yung pakiramdam, pero by the time ng, ano ba, tanghali, dun yun na na-experience na medyo bumababa yung um, yung, yung um, system ninyo o kaya nagkakaroon na kayo ng um, symptoms, then please inform ka agad so that i-isolate kayo pa agad at titignan kung meron nga kayong COVID. 
Exactly. What if naman after, Wednesday yung class nyo, Thursday nyo na-experience yung, yung symptoms, inform nyo pa rin. Kasi ang gagawin natin, of course, mag-monitor tayo sino yung mga naging close contact ninyo at imo-monitor din ito nga. For example, if you are in a class of uh, 10, then lahat ng mga uh, kaklase ninyo and even the teacher will of course uh, do quarantine. Kasi titingnan din nila, baka sila din na-expose din pala. Okay? So alam naman natin yan and it is our um, requirement no, or obligation to follow this uh, protocol. Number eight, that I will subject myself at my own cost to a real-time uh, RT-PCR testing or the rapid antigen testing administered by DOH accredited laboratory as recommended by the clinic in case I fall under the conditions of any of these three items that we talked kanina. And number nine, that I will subject myself to RT-PCR uh, and the rapid antigen testing administered by the clinic in case I fall under 7.1 while inside the campus. So ito yung nagkaklase na tayo, tanghali, then you have that experience ng, um, ng symptoms, then bibigyan kayo ng rapid antigen testing. Number 10, if I contract COVID-19, anytime during the term of the participation in the LF2F classes, I shall submit a medical clearance prior to rejoining my class and or participating in the college activities. So yun nga po, what if the positive phase of COVID? And then of course, um, you will have to submit sa clinic, sa school, na um, after some time, na, na maki-clear na kayo, na magne-negative na kayo. So, ibig sabihin, magpapa-testing kayo at may mga medical clearance na kailangan i-submit. Assumption of risk, I fully understand that there are dangers, inherent and otherwise, in engaging in face-to-face -face classes and or college activities, including traveling to and from the college campus during the COVID-19 pandemic. Ako actually ang nag-request nag na idagdag itong provision na ito because I believe that the college has really done everything in its power to make sure that our campus is safe okay, for, for everyone. Sa amin din na bilang mga guro, ang ating mga non-teaching personnel, at lalo na sa inyo ating mga estudyante. But there's still that risk. So what if nagko-commute yung ibang estudyante, okay, um, then andun pa rin yung inherent risk okay, that we can contract COVID okay, in other um, settings. O halimbawa, um, may mga makukulit na estudyante na gumimik pa okay, afterwards o tas doon nagkaroon ng COVID. So yun yung mga situation na yun na kaya hopefully talagang susunod tayo sa mga protocols natin to minimize. Kasi if in case na mayroong magkaroon ng um, may magpa-positive, then yun, magka-quarantine yung buong class. Okay? So kaya kailangan natin, um, we are fully aware of all the risks and that we will really protect ourselves and in doing so, we are also protecting each other. Tuloy natin, I further understand my participation may expose myself to the risk of personal, personal injury, illness, or death, and or causing myself to acquire COVID-19 and its mutations and transmit it to others, notwithstanding the college's best efforts to implement and require compliance with prevention and mitigating measures of the national and local government, implementation of health and safety protocols, and that I have proactively taken steps to reduce possible infection. Waiver and release of liability, I hereby release, waive, and forever discharge any and all liability, claims, and demands, whatever kind or nature against the De La Salle College of St. Benilde, its administrators, officers, employees, associates, and agents, either in law or equity to the fullest extent permissible by law, including but not limited to death, bodily injury, injury illness, economic loss, or out-of-pocket expenses or loss or danger to property related to my participation in face-to-face -face classes and or college activities, which I, my heirs, assignees, next of kin, and or legally appointed or designated representatives may have or which may here and after accrue on my behalf. I have read this undertaking, assumption of risk and waiver, know and understand and agree to be bound by its contents and, its, and sign it on my own volition. So pipirma po kayo bilang sudyante at magkukusign din po ang inyong parent and guardian. And this is very particular to the students 18 years old and above, pero meron din provision for the students 18 years old, um, below 18 years old. So ang difference naman dito, ang maunang pipirma ay ang parent, pero co-signing pa rin si student. Okay? 
So again, this is very important as part of the limited face-to-face -face classes natin that we will complete itong mga requirements na to, that yes, we are fully vaccinated and preferably booster, boosted. Okay, um, if we are MARP, that we have that fit to participate and that the, our clinic will clear you. Okay, na you can really participate. You have a field health or uh, equivalent medical insurance. Ibig sabihin, covered kayo sa COVID kung meron mang mangyari. Um, knowing that there is that inherent risk and that we will submit a signed deed of undertaking. So, itong third term, okay, we had did a lot of the orientation sa students, una in general muna, and then eventually when we limited down to anong courses talaga yung i-offer namin, we did another um, orientation to detail actually what we will be doing. And then we also talked to the parents, and then eventually enlistment. So enlistment, you enlist, and then um, you submit sa RO lahat ng mga requirements na ito. Um, yung iba nag-submit pa ng okay, copy ng field health. Hindi naman kailangan. Kasi basta nakasulat naman na sa deed of undertaking natin that you are covered. That you are um, vouching that yung meron kang medical insurance. Hindi mo na kailangan i-provide yung copy ng field health mo or ng insurance mo sa school. You're just saying that you have your own, um, that you are covered uh, against COVID. Okay, so basically, ano lang yung sinasubmit namin kay KRO during that time was a copy of the vaccination and that we have submitted the uh, uh, signed deed of undertaking. Ito yung mga naging guidelines namin. Ayan po. Ano yung mga pinakita namin sa sa RO, proof of the full vaccination status, proof of kung may booster vaccination na if only applicable, and the signed deed of undertaking. Okay, bear with me. I'm on slide 54. Okay, so that was the stringent uh, guidelines of CHED and IETF. So by April, we are, because bumaba na nga yung alert level, CHED also released another set of guidelines, supplementary guidelines for the face-to-face -face, um, implementations. So let me just go over them, okay? So additional provisions na ito. Students, teaching, and non-teaching personnel, ganun pa rin po. With uh, alert level two, we're in only fully vaccinated teaching, non-teaching, and students shall be allowed in the premises. Okay. And while unvaccinated or partially vaccinated students shall continue under the flexible learning modalities. So ganun pa rin po, ang pwedeng mag-participate dun sa campus ay yung mga fully vaccinated. Kung hindi ka pa vaccinated, then you still have that option to do the online classes. Okay, uh, flexible learning pa rin tayo, available. Again, uh, learning um, the limited face-to-face -face classes, are not, they're not mandatory. There's always that provision for the full online classes. Classroom capacity, CHED is saying that we can now accommodate maximum of 100%. Okay. Pero si Benil, sabi nga natin, we will not, um, we will always subscribe to the lower percentage. So ngayon, we, we are actually planning for a 70% capacity. So although Ched is saying na pwede na mag 100%, gusto pa rin natin on the safe side, may enough space pa rin tayong gumalaw na ipoprovide natin ay 70% capacity. Physical distancing, kung ano yung, um, what we deem appropriate. So the college is uh, deciding now we will still follow the 1.5 meter social distancing. Engineering controls. So ito yung nakasulat na about the air quality. So katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, yung previous na requirement, zero recirculation ng hangin, lalo na for the air conditioned space. Dito sa bagong guidelines, hindi na ni-require. Okay, so ibig sabihin, pwede na natin gamitin yeah, regular yung ating mga um, um, air conditioning system natin. So, hindi na kailangan mag-retrofit dun sa ibang mga classrooms. So, yung mga nagawa na dun sa mga nauna na okay na yon pero for the rest of SDA building, okay, hindi na kailangan mag-retrofit ng air conditioning system natin. So, balikan ko yung slide 26. Again, yung mga naunang kwarto dito sa mga floor na ito na retrofit natin kasi ganun ka stringent yung requirement. Pero yung ibang mga floors, okay, it's the regular ano na natin, regular air conditioning system natin. And Shed is saying and IATF saying na um, it is already safe enough for everyone. 
hand hygiene, ganun pa rin, adequate water supply, okay hand washing station, lagi may sabon, and hand free, hands free res, uh, trash receptacles. Okay, may mga visual cues, so lagi may mga signages all over the campus. Wearing a face mask at all times. Masks shall be worn properly, except when eating and drinking and participating in sports activities, okay, or um, kung outdoor activities na. Pero tayo, we will still maintain ang um, wearing of masks. Of course, kung except kung kumakain tayo. So even sa mga canteen natin or sa mga designated lunch areas along the hallways, we've also made sure na may social distancing pa rin na 1.5 meters. Retrofitting and disinfection of facilities, classroom and laboratories. So yun po, yung mga ginagamit natin ng mga um, disinfection um, uh, chemicals uh, within the prescribed FDA disinfectants um, guidelines. Uh, there was an initial requirement by CHED to provide acrylic barriers. So si teacher may acrylic barriers pa. Pero ngayon, optional na lang siya. So... Nagpagawa tayo ng mga initial set ng mga acrylic barriers pero a lot of the SDA teachers deemed it's not necessary for, for us lalo na uh, for our laboratories that we really do a lot of interaction with our students. So the, the mask will be enough. Okay, cyclical shifting model, regular class schedules. Okay. May nakaligtaan po ata akong slide. Okay, for the term three, this is uh, the requirement of CHED that there will be a required break or two weeks in between on-campus activities. So ang tawag ni Ched dyan ay the cyclical student shifting schedule. So even if we, were offer, if we are offering ngayong third term, we were actually required, kaya nga tinatawag siyang limited face-to-face -face classes kasi hindi pa rin siya kompleto. So if we have 14 weeks in a term, yung first two weeks online, weeks three, okay, doon lang kami pupunta ng campus. So yung week 3 namin, that will happen on May 25, nasa SDA kami. Week 4 and 5, balik kami sa online modality. Week 6, then limited face-to-face -face ulit. So that's June 15, nasa SDA ulit ito mga estudyante na to. Another 2 weeks na online, then week 9, July 6, nasa SDA kami. Then 2 weeks ulit na online, and week 12, which is July 27, balik kami ng campus. This is a requirement of CHED na meron siyang two weeks break in between. Bakit nila ginawan two weeks? This is also because of the provision na pag nagkaroon ng COVID, okay, uh, nagkahawaan nga, then may two weeks break para mag-recuperate ng lahat, para pagbalik, then safe na ulit para sa lahat ng sudyante at ng mga faculty. Okay. Pero ngayon, sinasabi na ni Ched na hindi na required okay, yung cyclical mode. Given the maximum indoor capacity of 100%, the adoption of a cyclical student shifting schedule or system is now optional. So pwede nang mag every week nasa campus. Pero si Benilde, again, lower version ang kukunin natin. Okay, hindi pa natin completely tatanggalin itong cyclical um, shifting model. Pero babawasan na lang natin. Instead na uh, may two weeks break ang gagawin lang natin, may one week break na lang. Yung, var, yung Omicron variant ngayon, mas mabilis din naman yung turnaround time o yung paggaling ng mga nagkakaroon ng COVID. So hopefully the one week will be enough for our students or faculty kung in case na magkaroon nga sila ng um, COVID and they can recover within a week time um, and then comply with all the requirements pa rin. So yes, okay, we will still do the cyclical shifting uh, system pero one week na lang yung cycle natin. There will be, sorry po, magkakan natin. Yes, may safety seal certification pa rin tayo. Okay. Number 10, student dormitories, no restriction. Sino po yung mga may student dorm? Uh, usually, meron tayong dormitory, yung managed by Benilde. Sa likod ng SDA, ito yung para sa mga athletes. Okay. May PE classes sa rin tayo. Okay, 100% full capacity na rin ito. But, um, uh, Intay na lang natin yung magiging announcement. I'm assuming wala naman tayong frosh dito. No? So tapos na kayo sa mga PE courses ninyo. O kung hindi man, yung mga frosh natin ngayon and magiging sophomore kayo by, by next school year. So baka may PE4 pa kayong kulang. Okay, um, we will already offer yung um, limited face-to-face -face classes para sa PE3 and PE4. Medical insurance and coverage. So requirement pa rin yung PhilHealth. 
So, ganun pa rin yung, uh, uh, meron pa rin tayong deed of undertaking na sinasabi natin na dapat register tayo sa PhilHealth or the equivalent medical insurance. May mga specific guidelines na basta may nirelease si DOH, nakaantabay tayo lagi monitoring kung ano yung mga bagong guidelines na release nila. Meron pa rin tayong mga safety and health officer okay, within the campus at lagi tayong may mga contingency plan. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng contingency plan natin? If in case na magkaroon ulit nga ng outbreak, okay, ready tayo to shift back okay, to the different phases natin. Ngayon naka-yellow phase tayo, pero kung tataas ang alert level 3, ready tayo to shift back immediately to red phase na naka-online learning modality tayo. Pero kung saglit lang naman, 2 weeks lang naman itong red phase, then bumaba ulit to level 2. Then pwede na ulit tayo bumalik sa limited face-to-face -face classes. We just need to monitor kung sa schedule, kung kaya pang magkaroon ng alternative class. Diba dati, every time na may, ma, ba, may bagyo at uh, nag-declare ng holiday or suspension of classes, we try to make that up, yung class na yun. Um, pagdating sa dulo, usually week 13 or week 14, then we provide alternative face-to-face uh, -face classes. But in this case, this will be uh, dependent now kung ano yung available schedules natin. Again, uh, medyo mahirap yung alternatives natin na every week lang yung mga classes natin. So in summary, with the uh, stringent requirement and then now ngayon na medyo lumuwag what are we doing okay yes we will offer the lf2f at in shortcut natin limited face to face um, the participation will still be limited to the fully vaccinated teaching non teaching and our student population requirement pa rin po ang medical insurance either feel health or your own equivalent medical insurance Sabi ni Chad, pwede na mag 100% classroom capacity, pero ang gagawin ni Benil, magre-reduce capacity lang muna tayo ng 70%. So you want to do it very gradually para i-ensure pa rin natin ang safety ng bawat isa. And no restriction on physical distancing. Sabi ni Chad, pero tayo, we will still do, uh, eto pala, ang physical distancing natin is 1 meter. And uh, wearing a face mask okay, with the exemption during eating and participation sa sports. Retrofitting, okay, um, sabi ni Ched, um, acrylic barriers are optional. Okay, so again, we have all these acrylic barriers, but we're opting not to use it because uh, medyo mahirap yung mobility natin. Lahat tayo, lalo na sa mga, imagine sa sewing machine area natin, kung may mga acrylic barriers pa tayo, baka mas maging hazardous pa sa atin kasi masikip na yung lugar natin. And uh, sabi ni Chad, there will be an optional cyclical shifting model, pero ang sabi ni Benil, we will still adopt one week interval. So papaano ang gagawin natin? For example, week one, online tayo. Week two, on campus. Week three, online. Week four, on campus. So it will be an interval. So in that, um, with the 14 weeks in total, kalahati doon, we can actually meet in campus. So mga guidelines natin, we are prioritizing laboratory courses. Okay. Uh, medyo konting lecture course lang. So basically, kung lecture ka, for example, history, okay, um, then i-opt natin na mag-full online na lang ang mga lecture classes so that we can uh, focus our energy in managing all this uh, mobility concerns natin para sa mga lab courses natin. And then we will now start following the regular course schedules natin ng Monday to, halimbawa, uh, um, Ito kasi dun sa mga one and a half hour lang yung classes, ano, lalo ng mga GE courses. Pero for SDA courses, it's really three hours and above. So halimbawa nga, ang class mo ay 8 to 11. Okay, then may break tayo ng 11 to 11.20. And then class again, 11.20 to 2.20. We will adhere to the 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. schedule. Um, dati sa SDA, we have classes na 6 to 9 p.m. For now, iiwasan muna natin yan because kulang konti yung mga personnel natin. We cannot have a lot of shifts. So we will just have one shift for the day. At saka para schedule din kasi kung masyado tayong gagabihin, then masyado rin gagabihin yung mga personnel na nakasupport sa atin. Like yung sa mga laboratories natin, yung mga lab techs natin, yung mga janitorial, yung mga security. So mahirapan din silang umuwi. Diba? So kaya ilimit muna natin. Pero for example, for the big programs like MMA, they are already projecting na mukhang hindi enough yung Monday to Friday na 8 to 5. So we're now considering offering also Saturday classes. Pero 8 to 5 pa rin. Ensure availability of the vaccinated faculty and we're coordinating with the administration of different departments 
uh, for suitability of the learning venues. Yung katulad nga ng sinabi ko, kailangan nating aralin yung mga classrooms natin kung uh, we can provide that one meter um, social distancing and uh, ano yung maximum capacity natin. Coordinate with RO for the requirements of the um, uh, Ms. Olive, ito yung sa course file updates natin, no? And the range statement of laboratory fees. So for all the courses na may limited face-to-face -face courses, na, uh, classes na po, full na po ang laboratory fees na to. So for example, for um, MMA, ang kanilang laboratory fee ay nasa 4,900. So if they have enrolled for this particular section na may, may access na sa equipment, then buo na rin po yung bayad nila ng 4,900. Ms. Olive, magkano po ang ating laboratory fee for FDM? About 3,000 something. Okay so, three, okay, so 3,000 ang laboratory fee ng FDM. So I also ask this uh, when you were doing uh, all our uh, uh, preparations and lahat ng plans namin, kompleto na po ba yung buong lab fees natin? So ang sagot, yes. So although hindi pa natin fully na ma-maximize yung, okay, uh, as you will notice, 50% pa lang yung access natin sa campus. Ano? So bakit buo yung bayad natin sa laboratories natin? Because just opening up the whole SDA okay, is actually very costly na. Okay. So kahit na konti pa lang, katulad ngayon, by May 25, magsisipasok pa na nga. Wala pang 5% yung papasok na estudyante sa SDA building. And yet, we will turn on okay, the whole air conditioning system of SDA building kasi nga centralized siya. So it's actually more costly for the uh, for Benilg to operate this. But of course, we need to do it kahit na gradual pa ito. So the cost of a few people paying the laboratory fees versus the cost of actually operating the whole campus already, even for a day, Okay, it's already mas malaking na yung cost na sinasalo ng college. Okay, so and yet, and also in the last two years, okay, we've been maintaining all our equipment. So kahit na wala pang estudyante sa eskwelahan natin, okay, of course, we are continuously monitoring yung lahat ng facilities natin. May mga lab technicians pa rin tayo. Lahat yun nasa cost ng college. So kaya we've been operating on the negative. So negative din po ang 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 pagpapatakbo ng ng Benilde for the last two years. So ang ang ang, ang kinailangan naging decision for for this limited face to face classes ay buo na rin po talaga ang ating um, laboratory fees. So yun po uh, so kung ang inyong fee ay 3000 then you will be required to pay now the full laboratory fees niyo na 3000 for that particular course lang naman. Okay, so sharing na rin ng um, cost just to operate the whole uh, um, building natin. Ito, coordinate with CFAD for the blended. Uh, ito na po, internal na po namin to sa, uh, para sa ating chairs and mga faculty. We're also adjusting our syllabus. Uh, iba yung syllabus natin para dun sa full face-to-face. -face. Iba rin, nag, nagbago din kami, nag-complete kami ng mga syllabus natin for the full online and then now we're again um, rewriting our syllabi for the limited face-to-face -face, which is already a combination of online and face-to-face. Um, -face. Marami talaga tayong kinailangan gawin. So hindi ito overnight. Facilities, the teacher's training, okay, and all the requirements to shed, kinailangan namin ihanda to ensure na ready tayo sa um, pag-conduct natin ng ating limited face-to-face -face classes. So for the school year 22-23, term 1, lahat na po ng mga schools, lahat na ng programs were offering different courses and a lot of sections. 486 sections na po ang mag-offer ng limited face-to-face -face classes. We're actually excited to welcome back our students. Versus yung kanina, ilan lang yung mga um, courses na mag-offer? Saan na ba yun? Para lang makita niyo kung gaano ka, ka gradual yung ginagawa. Yan, no? 26 courses lang yung ino-offer namin ngayong term 3. Pero pagdating ng term 1 by September, okay, we're already preparing for the 486, uh, 160 courses and 486 sections. And particularly to the fashion design, ito po yung ating um, offering. So we have five courses, FDM Text 2, FDM Crea 1, FDM Draping, FDM Proj, I think this is the capstone, and the FDM Elective, which is more on the styling. Um, 
Sino-sino yung mga batches na mag, uh, mag-a-avail nito? So, batch 121, you are our current frosh. Okay, batch 120, you are our sophomores now. And the batch 1119, sila yung ating mga juniors. So, pagpasok ng next school year, ito mga juniors natin, mga, mga magiging seniors na, and preparing na for graduating mga graduating students na natin sila. We're also anticipating ilang kayong numbers at ilan yung mag- mag- magpipili okay, ng face-to-face. So you would notice here, uh, ito yung total number of students ninyo per batch, 78, 76, 74, pero hindi lahat ina-anticipate natin mag enroll sa limited face-to-face classes. So sabi ni Ms. Olive, ang anticipation lang, 20 students for the FDM text, uh, 40 students for the FDM CREA, 40 students for the FDM trade. So, um, itong 40 out of the 76, uh, so nasa 50% lang yung ina-assume na um, participation. At ilan yung mga sections? Ito na. We're already preparing for this kasi mag enlistment na tayo pagdating ng midterms natin. So, by June, we have to be ready with all our courses for the limited face-to-face classes and for the online um, courses natin. So, may online. Uh, so, ito. The delivery ratio. So, kung mag enroll ka dun sa limited face-to-face. Okay. Yeah, Sir Aldous, I think we can stop na. No? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dean. Uh, I think uh, we can have already question and answers. Kasi kanina, FDM na yung kanina pinag-uusapan. Eh. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, we can stop already and uh, maybe Dean can already answer some questions from the regarding F2F. I din uh, before I forgot no. Uh, may paalala lang po uh, bago ang apprentice or ang OJT natin. We are still currently in uh, online class ngayong three, third term. So might as well ang um, ibig sabihin niyan ay uh, online pa rin po ang modality natin. If there are companies na ayaw nilang mag-accept regarding about uh, uh, online uh, maghanap na lang po ng ibang company na they can accept. Okay. Um, Miss Erica, you want to talk some to, uh, regarding about the uh, PROPRA? Nakamute po, ma'am. Ay, um, akala ko na pinakita. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, everyone, uh, all this, uh, most of the students have been asking uh this question nga na about online and parang yun yung naging challenge nila since bumabalik na po sa normal um yung mga firms na nasa current list natin are starting to transition back to face to face so may mga site visits na kaya parang yung mga students medyo challenge na maghanap ng firms na based uh, online pa rin plus the fact na 80 hours lang yung uh, requirement since nahating apprentice natin to one and two. Yun, 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 yun po yung isa sa mga uh, concerns ng students natin for apprentice one. Sige po. So let me answer. I understand yung difficulty natin ngayon with the transition from the from the online, full online, and then we're slowly transitioning back to the uh, work in office. <laughs> kami rin po, bumabalik na rin po kami sa school. Ayan, so dahan-dahan. But because of the chat guidelines that we have to follow every term. So again, meron na kami ngayong third term na few of the courses will be offered limited face-to-face. Pero bago namin may offer at magsipasokan kami next week on May 25, we actually had to submit that ano pa, um, months ago. So, ibig sabihin, mahabang preparasyon para makuha natin yung approval ni CHED. So, ibig sabihin po, ang apprentice, hindi po natin in-apply for the limited face-to-face. So, nasa, nandun pa rin siya sa category ng full online classes. So, ganun din po, ang magiging OJT uh, deployment natin, dapat naka-online pa rin tayo. Pero ngayon na nakikita na natin, na ready na rin na tayo ang, ang industry to accommodate itong um, face-to-face, then pwede na rin natin po itong isama sa application natin kay CHED for the first term. So Sir Harvey, medyo pwede na po natin siyang i-consider, okay na i-apply. Now, ano lang yung titingnan natin pagka-OJT? So kailangan tingnan din natin yung facilities ng mga opisina na ito. So kailangan sila din na po comply 
Kasi tayo, sobrang higpit ng mga requirements sa atin, di ba? So, kailangan dun sa mga opisina na yon kailangan din tingnan kung in compliance sila. Dahil at the end of the day, accountable pa rin si Benil dahil studyante namin kayo. So, hindi lang siya basta sinabi lang ng uh, partner companies natin na pasok na kayo. Hindi, kailangan din nila mag-submit sa amin ng mga requirements na yon And kasama doon, they also have to get LGU approval. Ibig sabihin, kung ang pisina nila nasa Pasay o nasa Quezon City, dapat meron din silang seal of approval ng kanilang LGU na uh, within protocols din sila. Again, lahat ng ito ay para ma-ensure namin ang safety ninyong lahat. Pwede po ako mag-screen share? Ay, sige po, miss. Sige po. Um, sino po nagmamanya? Ayan, Sir Aldo. Thank you po. Ayan. Ito po yung sa ngayon na nakasubmit for architecture, limited face-to-face -face classes natin. Ayan. So salamat po pala sa pakikinig sa mahaba akong presentation. That was the presentation for fashion last week. At pasensya na po, hindi ako nakapag-present ka sa inyo din kaagad dahil I came from a general assembly naman for the faculty. So uh, as soon as we finish that, ayun, takbo na ako dito sa RT. So ito naman po yung so far na naka naka-apply or nire-report pa lang ng architecture. So by first term, we will be offering ARFCOM 3, ARCAD 2, ARCAD 1, ARCAD 7, 9, and 10. Okay? So ito pwede pa pong magbago. I'm just sharing it with you. Okay? Or even to our students. Okay? So alam ko marami po tayong subjects pero hindi pa natin lahat kayang i-offer kasi again, we're doing this gradually to ensure na um, kaya natin... Um, um, sumunod sa lahat ng mga safety protocols natin. And nakasulat din po dyan kung anong batch. So 121, these are our current frosh. Okay, so by uh, so frosh namin kayo ngayon, pero by first term, sophomore na kayo. Okay, ang ARCAD 2 and ARCAD 1 para sa sophomore and then incoming junior na sila by next year yan. And then 118 and 117. Po. So nakita po yung number dyan. But the limit, the projected... Um, LF2F lang, instead of ito yung lahat ng mga possible na mag-enroll, ang pinoproject lang nila Sir Harvey ay nasa mga 60%, then ito lang din yung pinoproject ng sections. Why is this important? Kasi yung tanong sa akin sa iba't ibang mga programs, paano daw po ba mamimili? Sa, sino ang, um, paano mamimili kung... Um, Sino ang pwede accommodate for the limited face-to-face -face classes? Kasi kung halimbawa, meron pa lang... Um, yan. Halimbawa, Sir Harvey, may 12 sections. Sections ba ito? Ayan. Halimbawa, 69 ang students sa, sa Art Desk 10. Pero ang balak lang i-offer ay isa na section. So yung isang section na to, that's only 12 students for Art Desk 10. So ang tanong, paano kung may 20 estudyante na interesado? So unahan po ba ito? Okay. So kung paano ang enrollment natin ngayon, Okay, doon din magkakatalo. So, kailangan mabilis din po kayong mag-enlist para ma-accommodate kayo kaagad. At pagka nakapag-enlist na, then provide kaagad lahat ng requirements natin. But the importance or the, the importance of this um, orientation is already gather your um, your ideas, your opinions as our students. So, kung sa tingin nyo, marami kayong interesado, then kausapin nyo na ang, ang chair, sila Sir Ven, okay, ang mga ACAD advisors, and then discuss na baka kailangan taasan itong section na ito. Okay? So we can prepare. We can prepare the venue. We can prepare the faculty. We can prepare lahat ng kailanganin natin. Okay? So para it, this is part of the stakeholders um, ba, stakeholders orientation natin. So complete naman tayo as a community na nag-discuss. After the, the student's orientation, we will also conduct parents' orientation. Okay? So kaya dahan-dahan natin itong uh, kinokonduct. Okay po, yun. Um, nasagot ko po ba yung tanong about OJT? Okay, so for the third term, online pa rin po tayo. Kung ayaw nila, hanap po tayo ng iba. Okay, I understand dahil 80 hours lang naman. Hindi naman kasi tayo full empleyado, di ba? Uh, dapat na tinuturoan nila tayo. So kung hindi sila ready to accommodate us, then okay. Then I'm sure we can still find naman other uh, OJT partners natin um, willing to teach us as part of our uh, apprenticeship. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, okay. Dean, may nagtatanong sa akin, nag-message. Sige uh, po. Paano daw yung nasa Luzon or Visayas or Mindanao pa yung paano sila magkakandang yes, ng face-to-face? -face? Kailangan po ba nilang mag-find ng dorm? 
hindi pa po. So kaya sabi ko doon sa umpisa, this is still voluntary. Ang limited face-to-face natin, optional po ito. Kaya hindi lahat, ano ba yan, art distance. Hindi po lahat ng sections ng art distance ay face-to-face. So mara- mas marami pa rin ang pulo online. Kasi marami pa nga tayong estudyante ang nasa probinsya, meron pa ang nasa abroad. Meron din tayong mga teachers na nasa abroad din na nagkakonduct ng mga online classes nila. So mas malaking percentage pa rin natin ang, ang full online. So, kaya pa rin natin ituloy kung, kung pwede pang madelay, lalo na kasi kung luluwas na kayo dito at magdodorm, tapos isa lang naman pala yung class nyo na, na may limited face-to-face classes, tapos every other week pa yung punta ng, ng campus, di ba? Parang sayang naman. You can still be with your family. Makakatipid pa rin po tayo. Okay. Uh, any questions? Gusto namin marinig yung boses ninyo. Yung mga nagme-message sa akin, baka pwede... Oo nga. Uh, di ba? Shy, para shy marinig, type ba ang mga RT? Oh, imposible. <laughs> imposible na shy type yung mga yan. You were trained. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Anything else? Elise, uh, sabihin mo na nga yan. Tanong mo na. Sige, kaya mo yan. Kaya mo yan. Ano? Kaya mo yan. <laughs> Tato, pag-message ko sa sinabi. <laughs> Hi, Elise. Um, Hi po miss, I'm just asking lang po if kapag li- papasok sa limited face-to-face, yung schedule po ba for the full ske- schedule na siya? Like, di ba po pag online, usually they take up around one and a half to two hours lang. Pero pag limited face-to-face po ba, aabutin yung whole schedule, like three hours to four hours, five? Opo. Ang purpose ng limited face-to-face natin is para magkaroon tayo ng access sa facilities natin sa sa campus, di ba? Lalo na yung ating mga computers, ganyan. I understand for for architecture, medyo konti yung ating mga yan, mga arcad, arcom, ganyan. Um, ito yung mga computer-based classes natin and mostly ano tayo more on the mentoring side. Pero for the other programs talaga na talaga heavy sila on the studio side, heavy sila on the usage of the laboratories, they're asking for more time actually. Yun. So kung five hours yung kanilang computer class, they would want to even have an extra time pa, lalo na animation, pag nag-render sila. Yun. So kung, kung pwede nga i-overnight yung rendering, yun, para mat- tapos pero so yung sagot doon is we will maximize if your class is from 8 to 11 then we will be in class in school for 8 to 11 so uh, medyo babantayan din po natin ito yung isang um, difficulty with this limited face to face classes and then the rest of your of your um, section or classes naka online pa din imagine mo 18 units ka naka enroll 3 units lang yung isang subject mo lang ang limited face to face then the rest ay 15 units na online so lahat yon via zoom pa rin kayo synchronous asynchronous tapos meron ka isa na nasa campus so paano kung 8 to 11 nag uh, in campus ka tapos yung susunod mo class 11:20 Zoom pala yung kailangan. Medyo mahirap kasi konti pa lang yung facilities natin sa sa campus na can accommodate your Zoom classes. So medyo kailangan din natin maging strategic sa pagkuha ng classes natin, ng schedules natin, na kung pwede yung isang araw na nasa na limited face-to-face class, yun lang yung uh, schedule mo para you can still mak- maximize your time in school. Yun. And then the rest of the week, yun yung pwede, pwede mo schedule for your full online. So, and sagot po doon, yes, we will maximize. And if kung kaya po namin, i-accommodate pa kayo to, to extend to sa mga gusto pang gumamit ng mga equipment natin, we will try that. Pero kung hindi, yung iba naman gusto nang umuwi after their 8 to 11 class, then pwede rin naman po. Sir Harvey, merong question? Ay, uh, yeah. concern? Pa- follow up ko lang, like, uh, um, like what you saw in the list of subjects, uh, puro lab class kasi we have students na walang rebit sa bahay um, and then they can use our laboratory computers to to use yung mga BIM, um, yung mga 3DS Max na, na mga softwares. Mainly yun yung focus natin for this incoming first term. So it's a transition period. Uh, ang difference then is um, for blended which will have itong limited face-to-face. So what will happen po is pagpasok nyo ng classroom um, walang lecture na mangyayari. So it's more about you maximizing your time sa laboratory. So the lectures would still happen online just like our online classes right now. So lahat ng mga synchronous classes will also happen online. So pagdating natin sa classroom, um, the mentors will more or less facilitate 
your activities. Uh, pag may mga tanong tungkol doon sa exercise, uh, nandoon sila for the duration of the, the hours. So yun yung main difference natin for blended and online. So sa blended po, I, I, I have to reiterate, um, it's more about your access doon sa mga laboratories natin which we missed out. Although we are also exploring um, technical design subjects, yung mga art desk uh, 5 to 8, but uh, we are still deleting um, yung thesis as possible kasi medyo mahirap yung revalida if uh, if we are trying to control yung yung um if we are trying to control yung capacity or yung occupancy ng ng SDA it's going to be difficult for us to control yung the revalida so that we are still devising uh, why we are discussing it now it's key that uh, if you are really interested given the number of requirements medyo ngayon pa lang maaga pa lang magprepare na tayo those that are um, not in the zone like sabi nga nung iba na sa ibang bansa pa um, there will be a chance for you so this is just a starting uh, process um, we are still also transitioning uh, wag tayo magpadali and and this is not something that is compulsory voluntary po ito so yun po Okay, thank you. Uh, Edmund Pua, may tanong ka? Pakitanong na po. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. So, yung, for the price, for the face-to-face -face and the online, is it the same lang po? The same po. Ang difference oh, po nice. ay, maniningil na po tayo ng lab fees. Kung may lab fees po for that particular uh, course, then full lab fees na po siya. So, for so example, the, yung ARFCOM, ARCAD 2, ARCAD 1, may mga lab fees po yan. So, the only difference lang po is the add-on na 3,000? Uh, magkano ang lab fees ng architecture? Yung 3,000 sa FDM kasi yun. Sir Harvey, magkano yung 2,300 ang computer lab natin? 2,300 yung na-declare po natin na in-apply okay. natin for ARCOM lab. Okay, so yun po yung uh, difference. The use of our laboratory. So may bayad po siya. Thank you. Thank you po. Okay. Uh, Miss Kaylin Imperial, you can ano, uh, say your questions. Para at least ano. Sige, Miss Kaylin. About your apprentice. Ah, not working yung mic. Sige, ang tanong daw po niya is uh, may list of firms yung apprentice. Uh, kaya lang they prefer face-to-face -face setup for the term. Others naman are not accepting for this term. Will the school be giving a new updated list since it's also a 2020 version? So, wala daw tumatanggap yata sa kanila dahil kailangan daw nila ng face-to-face. Yung listahan po natin, 2020 pa? Opo, 2020 pa po. Maganda nga pong i-update natin. Siguro, mm -hmm. make the rounds, make the calls. Okay. Um, ito pong listahan natin ng network so mag ng mga ating mga partners. So maganda po yung initiative. Pero we don't have to be limited dito sa current list natin. Kasi baka may mga internal na rin po kayo, contacts, um, na pwede rin po kayo mag-OJT. Kailangan lang natin mag-fill up na, kumbaga mag, we will just enter into memorandum of agreement with this new um, architectural firms. Pero we understand it's really a limitation. Dalo na po nung kakastart pa lang ng pandemic. Uh, marami po sa mga projects ng mga architectural firms ang na-hold because of the pandemic. So therefore, marami na wala ng trabaho, marami din po ang hindi nag-offer ng mga OJT. So it's not a problem of uh, ngayong 2022. It has been an ongoing problem for the past two years because of the pandemic. So konting tsaga, okay, kailangan talaga maghanap. If the, um, di natin pwede ipilip sa mga hindi pa kayang mag-accommodate ng mga OJT. So pero kailangan maghanap. And we have to take it upon ourselves okay, to look for um, mga kung saan tayo pwede mag-OJT. Kung merong initial listahan na ma-provide ang ating apprentice teacher, well and good. Kung hindi, kailangan pa rin po maghanap. Okay? Um, hindi po ito pa-provide ng, ng biniyag. So kailangan maghanap din po tayo. Uh, again, pasalamat po tayo dun sa mga apprentice teacher natin na 
nag-gather nitong mga uh, list of networks natin. Pero kailangan din po talaga magsariling sikap tayo. Pagka-graduate nyo po at nagtrabaho na kayo, maghahanap po talaga tayo ng um, pagtatrabahuhan din natin. Apo, so kasama din po yan sa training natin. Okay, part of uh, to preparing to be a professional. Alright. Um, we have another question from Maria Isabella Antonet. Uh, uh, maybe we can hear your voice. You can talk. Miss Maria Isabella. Hello po. Hello. Hello. Po. Uh, hi po, Miss. Paano po kapag halimbawa po sa week, week one po na pinakita niyo po na um, online class, if I'm not mistaken po. Okay. Uh, Ayan po, paano po kapag yung week one, parang may ibang subjects po na may halong uh, online classes tas on campus, pwede po ba like pumunta sa campus ng maaga or stay sa campus po for a while tas doon po mag-online class? Um, good question po. Medyo yun po yung limitation natin ngayon um, sa school. Um, if for, for example, we're anticipating already 2,000 students, tas lahat kayo mag-online class, we don't have the, the facility to accommodate everyone. And also yung ating internet, yung ating um, bandwidth in, in campus, although i-update na rin ito, hindi lahat kakayanin kung lahat tayo nandoon para mag-Zoom classes, medyo mas malaki yung capacity na kakailanganin on our bandwidth. So hindi pa namin ito in-encourage that... Uh, that our students will go to school just for the online, for, for a Zoom class. So pupunta ka ng school for your uh, face-to-face class. Pero tama yung tanong, what if meron ka sa araw na yon? When we say kasi week one, okay, hindi naman yung buong week nandoon ka sa, um, sa on-campus na may week two. Ano? Pwede kasi out of your 18 units, isa lang, okay, yung limited face-to-face class mo. So, ilan yun? Limbawa, six subjects yon Yung lima, online pa din. Yung isa lang, yung limited face-to-face. So, yung isa na yon what if Wednesday din yung class mo? So, on Wednesday, nasa campus ka. So, ako, what I'm saying is that to be strategic, pagkakumuha tayo ng schedules, na kung kakayanin, na huwag ka, huwag ka magkaroon ng um, other subjects on the Wednesday, nakasabay yung, or kasunod ng limited face-to-face kasi baka mahirapan tayo pag nasa campus kayo na makahanap ng magandang kwesto para mag-online class. Hindi pa kasi lahat bubuksan eh. Nasagot ko ba yung tanong? Okay ba? Ayun. Nag-thank you doon. Nag-thank you na siya. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Apo. Uh, Pero ayun, naiintindihan ko po yung tanong. Medyo kaya talagang minadahan-dahan namin. Kasi tinitignan natin hanggang saan yung capacity. Ganun din po, may mga teachers na nagtatanong na pwede rin na ba ako mag-online class? Pupunta sila ng school, tas doon din sila mag-online. So, we, we would like to accommodate them also, pero dahan-dahan lang. So, hopefully, sa susunod na mga terms, mas, ma, mas marami tayong variation na kaya ng i-accommodate. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Dots, may mga, alam ko, may mga questions ang Saga or other concerned members. Dots? Hi, sir. Um, basahin ko po ba yung kinumpile namin? Ah, uh, medyo marami 'yan kung i-compile 'yon. Yung, yung pinaka <laughs> bang summary? Oh, yung yung ano lang, yung pinaka main concern na about F2F ganyan or any uh, pressing matters na sa tingin mo uh, importante talaga. Pwede mo unahin natin yung for the limited face to face. We have to jump to another faculty orientation. Agree, Opo. agree. Okay. So pwede pong mauna. Dos, baka Sige, merong dos. mga katanungan for the limited face to face. Um, for the face to face term, I only have five questions na nakatimerize ko po under this. Madami na rin yan, ha? Ah. Sige, oh, let's go. <laughs> um, Here you go. I wait, no. Ah, kasi po, nasagot na rin technically yung iba. So, I'll okay. skip the other questions po. Okay, good. Um, Next question. Ito po. If magkakaroon po ng face-to-face, this is, the way this question was written, i-reiterate ko lang po. If there will be face-to-face classes, does this lead to the potential of having a face-to-face graduation? Yes. Apo, uh-huh. naaprubahan na po ng academic count ng uh, BLT, Benihot Leadership Team natin, na ngayong July, it will be face-to-face. So yung mga graduate po nung second term, it will be face-to-face na yung graduation. So, Dod, anong year ka na ba? Graduating uh, thir- ka na ba? 
Third, Third okay. year po ako. So, may two oh years ka pa, I'm sure, face-to-face na tayo. Opo. Uh, I think this question came from an upper batch po. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, may isa pong question about um, from our students that are currently abroad. They're just clarifying, will the courses that are available for face-to-face still be conducted online oh, yeah. simultaneously? Yes. So, may mga section na online, may mga section na limited face-to-face. Um, in that case po ba, how will we be able to identify it sa, sa pag nag enlist po kami? Parang may course code po yun or sa section talaga namin matitingnan po? Yes po. Yes. Ganun tanong. Mm-hmm. So, sa course code natin, halimbawa, R, ano yun, R form 3. So, Opo. magkakaroon ng isang letter. Ano nga ba letter yun, Sir Hardy? Mm-hmm. Letter B ba? R form B. Okay? Parang may ah. additional letter to signify na this particular course code na ito, ito yung online. Eh, ito yung limited face-to-face natin. So, maganda yung tanong. Magkakaroon po ng um, designated uh, may, may, yun, may karagdagan do sa course code. So, it's really ah. important yung enlistment, guys, ha? Kasi mm-hmm. it would also determine yung kung mapupuno natin yung section na limited face-to-face na tinitingnan natin. So, be wary in terms of kung saan kayo mag encode I We've had experience na Nalilito for some reason during enlistment or hindi nakapag-enlist, gusto mag, mag uh, limited face-to-face. So if you enlist doon sa course na yun, um, gaya nga na sinabi kanina, there will be a bit of extra kasi you have to pay for the uh, laboratory which is uh, face-to-face. Okay po, I understand po. Um, I have two more questions for the face-to-face category sure. po. Um, this, these two questions are more on the resources or like certain materials that we need. For uh, The first question that I have po is from the batch 120 and 121, they're asking po, if face-to-face, will they be required to get a physical ID from the school or follow the same process that they were oriented on, which was to have it mailed to them? Good question. Apo, kasi da- sa, sa mga nakakatanda, okay, mga third year, fourth year seniors natin. Okay. Yan, may mga ID na kayo, di ba? Because you experienced um, yung ating face-to-face classes. Pero for the batch 120 and 121, yung fresh and sophomores, di pa sila talaga nakakatungtong sa, sa SDA campus and they haven't gotten their ID or they may have opted to have their IDs mailed to them. But kung hindi, so yung tanong, will they need IDs? Yes. Kasi kailangan po yun sa pagpasok natin, part din yan ng security natin. So that to ensure na lahat ng nasa loob lang ng campus ay talagang mga binilled yan employees and students lang, hindi yung kusino-sino lang. So yung sagot po ay yes, we will need the ID. Kung paano kukuhain yung ID, pwede nyo pong i-avail nga yung sa mail. Okay, pahati yun na sa inyo. Or kung meron kayong panahon para to go to campus ng mas maagang panahon, then you can also, I think, uh, pick it up from the RO office. Uh, I hope that answers the question po from that batch that asked. The other question that I have po is about lockers. So a uh, student asked, with regards to the face-to-face classes, will they be allowed to use the lockers in campus or not yet? Mm, since wala tayong drafting, it's mostly computer labs. Um, maybe hindi siya kailangan. But... Uh, it's available naman. Uh, the, but kasi pag, pag limited face-to-face, unfortunately, uh, limited din yung access natin sa klase. Uh, we will have uh, floor plans for each subject and then we will identify what are the spaces na pwede yung puntahan. So yun, kasi extra ingat tayo that we have yung cross, um, uh, cross paths with other, uh, other programs. So in order for ano rin, for your safety then. So um, we can still we can uh, the use of uh, library uh, will be open for first term pero limited pa rin siya online online pa din yung ano um, online pa din yung access natin. So we just pick up and then go. Um, so these are scenarios that we are looking at for this limited face to face. So cash limited because it's really limited but it's because of us still being careful pa din naman. Ah, I understand po. Sir, may, uh, um, may nagpahabol po ng question. Uh, this one question comes from ID118. It's regarding the, since face-to-face will be voluntary, uh, 
does it give us the option to also take a full online term for the okay okay there's another question po na hinabol rin uh, it says here can they ask if which class section would operate limited face to face for us to know which sections oh this is this is technically answered na since kanina na banggit na may specific course code for face to face classes but um i feel like this student is clarifying for how what other matters should they consider to know whether they should avoid a face to face class or not especially those who are outside of ncr um just generally don uh, and everyone um for the, this coming first term what we will be offering is uh more on yung computer lab subjects natin arcom 3 arcad 1 arcad 2 tapos yung design yung technical design uh, 5 to 8 we're still deliberating pero yung tatlong yun sigurado na yun that we will offer um next term um we we cannot also promise to offer a lot of subjects kasi um ano din, we, we try to limit also in terms of ano, um what we can uh what we can offer for uh, okay. next first term para lang ano safe for safety not just for the students but also for the mentors then Apo. Uh, sir, uh, this one isn't really a question. This is just my suggestion. So on, on our SIS accounts, whenever we enlist for courses and there's a scheduled conflict, usually SIS has an automated response to tell us not to take the course that affects the other course in terms of its schedule. Will it be possible po na i-update din ang SIS in a sense na, for example, some students may not be able to notice na may specific course code yung face-to-face class, pero... Ang nangyari, nag-enlist na, kasi some, I, I'm, I'm really not sure, kasi a lot of students reach out to us regarding enlistment concerns. And what if they enlisted in the online and the face-to-face course code of a single class at the same time? Will the, the system online also react to that, same as how it reacts to colliding schedules? Uh, sige, thank you, Dean. Um, thank you, Dodd. Galing ng tanong, ano? it's about investment. Um, yung current SIS natin, hindi kaya yung variation na in-offer natin ngayon. Uh-huh. So kaya yung ginagawa ngayon with enrollment, naka-manual. Okay, so da- minamano-mano natin. Kaya, uh, again, part ito nung lahat ng preparation natin. And for our SIS, eventually we will um, buy the new version. But for now, we're still using the old one and it has that in limited din siya. Hindi kaya. So yung RO guys natin, RO team natin ang nag, nag-enlist sa atin o nag-aasikaso nito. So yung tanong mo kung ma- madedetect ba ng SIS, okay, madedetect niya in a sense na um, tinitreat lang niya ito as um, um, the same courses na kung halimbawa um, Monday 8 to 11, hindi ka na pwede ulit kumuha ng another Monday 8 to 11. Uh, so that's uh, more basic yon. Pero yung okay. kung ma-distinguish ba nung sis kung ito ay online at ito ay limited face-to-face, hindi niya ma-distinguish, makikita lang niya na may difference in course code. And then it's our RO guys actually enlisting us or in-enlist nyo and then asikasuhin na ng mga taga-RO yon so that um, we can separate itong kailangan. Um, anong difference nung sa enlistment ng limited face-to-face? When you're done with limited with enlistment, the next part is you. Okay, if you enlisted in that, you will now have to submit yung requirements, the vaccination, the deed of undertaking, ganun. So pag na, nakompleto natin yun, then saka lang kayo mabibigyan ng SER. Okay, then dun lang kayo pwede magbayad. Yan. So yun naman yung difference nun, which will be now handled manually. Hindi kaya nung CISREP natin. Okay. I understand, Paul. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you, Paul. Right. then, Ano lang din, because the preparation is um, complex, so we will release the schedules and the sections early. Yes. As early siya kumpara dun sa mga online. So, may iwasan natin yung, sir, hindi ko alam na pang online pala yun. Ah, hindi okay. ko alam na pang face-to-face pala yun. Kasi we will be releasing the sections earlier. Kasi there will be a lot more preparations for the uh, okay. face-to-face section. So, alam nyo na beforehand, and we only have... Currently, we have three subjects that uh, that we are looking to offer as face to face. So, three subjects would like we'd have three three sections then per subject, uh, one section per subject. So, tatlong section lang yun. 
So, kung may maligaw pa rin tayo doon, um, yun, mahirap ng maligaw doon. So, may, 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 mali, may mali na kung maliligaw pa rin tayo doon. So, sana konting lang, di ba? Sana uh, konting lang yung maliligaw. Sana, sana 90%. Maliligaw, pero sana konti. Okay, talagang ano, right on, di ba? Alam nila yung ginagawa nila. Alam nila yung gusto nila mag-limited face-to-face. And that, that's the reason why we're doing this early orientations. Pero yun mo, week 2 pa lang tayo. But we're already doing the rounds. So that you can also talk to your parents. Kasi in our experience itong third term, maraming estudyante interesado. Pero pagdating ata sa parents, medyo syempre uh, nag-aalangan pa yung magulang. So please talk to your parents if you really want to do this. So that come enlistment, when you enlist, then sigurado na kayo. And we will also call for that orientation with faculty. But I'd like to talk to, talk to the faculty who are already invested or who are already um, deciding to participate. Kasi we have 4,000 students. Hindi ko kakayanin kausapin lahat ng, ano yan, ng uh, 8,000 parents, di ba? <laughs> Times to kagad dahil uh, parents and guardians pa ganun. So kung sino lang talaga yung interesado, then yun yung gusto natin ka-engage. Um, and again, this is gradual. Eventually, those who are still abroad, baka dumating yung after one year, they can already come back home so that they can participate with the different limited face-to-face classes and then eventually also ang ating graduation. May nirelease din pong memo ang LAMSEL, ang ating Lasalle and Mission in Student Life, that student activities can also be accommodated um, in, in campus, pero may mga kailangan din lang silang fill up na form. So for SAGA, Okay, kung may mga activities po tayo, let's just do the, the lahat ng requirements, submit kay LAMSA ng maaga para ma-approvehan din tayo. Um, paalala lang po, SDA Campus, o ang bago, uh, DAC na, okay, Design and Arts Campus, hindi po bukas ang aircon natin, ha? mahal ang aircon, ng, centralized aircon ng buong building. So kaya ang schedule lang natin ay May 25, June 15, July 6, yung apat na Wednesdays na sinabi ko, yun lang yun po yung apat na Wednesdays na bukas ang aircon natin. For the other days, kahit kami ay pumapasok, nagsasaga po kami na walang aircon ng ating building. But if you'd like, baka sa ta- campus, mas ma-accommodate po yung ibang mga activities. That's it for me. So okay na po ba ako? Iwan ko na po kayo sa inyong mga RQ mentors sa so para sa mga detalye. Lipat lang po ako sa faculty as a, ano, a faculty orientation namin. Thank you po. Thank you, RQ. Thank you, Miss you guys. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, Dean. So, so we're extending uh, a, a this few might be a, parang for for some this this might be a small step or a baby step doon sa face to face but actually this is a big step uh compared to what we've experienced this past two years so sabihin natin limang subject man lang at least eh mamasimulan na tayo ng face to face so uh be sure that you are um uh be sure that you are really ready and 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 with all the preparations and requirements um, you've already complied and um hopefully we'll see you next term so and then from here, from from here on uh, baka magluwag na ulit then we'll make more preparations okay so may mga questions pa ba tayo doon sir ben yes Nagpas thank you sir harvey uh, it's it's we we extended already uh konti lang naman yan okay so before we end this let us all end this with a closing prayer para at least ano tayo ni lord in the name of the father the son the holy spirit together let us all say the lasallian prayer um i will continue oh my god to do all my actions for the love of you our lady of the star pray for us, pray for us. saint john baptist de la sal pray, pray for, for us, us. Saint Benil Dromanson, pray for us. Pray for us. Leave pray Jesus for us. in our hearts forever. forever. So thank you po sa mga umatend na mga students. Thank you so very picture much. Picture taking. No. Ay, picture taking nga pala. Yes, yes. We will take picture taking. Uh, baka may mga uh, paki-on yung mga camera, guys. We would like to see you uh, for this last uh, time. Okay. Okay, on po ang mga camera natin. May mga four pages tayo. I- Teka, i-close ko yan para yan. Four Anapit pages. Anapit tayo magkita-kita, guys. Oh. Ayan, pakiayos po yung mga bangs. <laughs> pakiayos yung, ano, yung mga bok. Ilagay na lang yung mga headset para walang problema. Uh, yung mga bad hair day. Okay lang yan. 
Ako nga eh. Nagtanggal na ako. <laughs> Madaming humaba yung buhok during this quarantine. Oo, oh, marami. Ako, nagpagupit na ako ng lagay na to. Oo oh, nga. Oo oh, guys, ha? Alright. Uh, sino magtitake ng uh, Miss uh, Miss Erica? Hindi pa lahat, sir. Medyo ma- unti-unti pa yung iba. Uy, may kulay na pala yung buhok ni Dod, si... <laughs> Colorful na eh, Dod. Long time no see. Eh, pareho pala sila ni Kimba sabi. Colorful yung buhok eh. Uy, tamo na ako. Ano? <laughs> Wala, konti pa rin talaga. Sige. Oh, sige, we can start na, Miss Erica. Okay. One, two, three. Smile, everyone. Smile. Yeah. Next page pa tayo, Miss Erica. Wait po. Med slow ang aking computer. Uh, okay. Na, you know, binilled, <laughs> binilled computer ito. Save ka lang po itong isa. Medyo mabagal eh. Okay. Sige. One. Next page. Okay. Smile. Next okay. page. Okay. Ay, oh, wala na. Okay. One, two, okay. three. Smile. Ay, wala. Let. One, two, three. Smile. Alright, okay na po. Maraming okay. salamat. Okay. See everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks. Hi, guys. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Bye, thank you.